Gentlemen, welcome to the Revival Lifestyle Podcast, aka the Domino Revival Cast. Tonight, uh, I decided, hey, let's have, let's take over the show with the Domino Revival. There's a movie coming out October 24th. That's decided, next hey, Tuesday. Let's have, let's oh, take hold over on, the guys. Show with the Domino I have the stream the open. Is echoing. Revival. So we are going to uh, talk about the movie tonight. We're gonna t October twenty fourth is when it releases. This is a Zoom call, ladies and gentlemen. So we are we're gonna figure it out tonight. You might have some technical difficulties. I hear somebody echoing back. I think someone has it open. Uh, hold on, guys. We're hearing it twice here. Technical difficulties. I hear somebody echoing. Is that me playing it? No. It's playing in somebody's thing. But we'll figure it out. This is that's what I'm saying. It's Zoom. So we're gonna go for it. So tonight's gonna be an amazing night, guys. We believe tonight we're not just gonna talk about the movie that's coming out, but we're believing for the presence, the power, the anointing of God to be released in the broadcast. Just throughout this broadcast, we're praying for healing, for deliverance, for breakthrough. I'm gonna say this, I've seen the movie, most of us here have seen the movie, and this movie will absolutely change your life. I believe it's gonna be a catalyst to revival in America. We've all been contending, we've all laid our lives down for revival, we've all been praying, and I believe this movie is gonna be a catalyst, and so I'm getting my friends, my family, my unsaved loved ones, my saved loved ones, I'm getting all of them to the theater October 24th. And then I'm gonna pass it to Pastor Mike in a moment, but I wanna say this first, when Come Out in Jesus' Name re-released, they weren't able to put in the altar call at the end, which in my opinion was the absolute most powerful thing to see th thousands of theaters have a literal altar call. So this movie, we are able to do an altar call at the end of the movie. For those of you that keep asking in the comments, keep messaging us, will there be an altar call? Yes, there will be an altar call at the end of the movie where your family member, your loved ones, your friends, can make a decision and can receive breakthrough, receive healing, receive deliverance. So with all that being said, guys, tonight is the Domino Revival cast. We have some serious heavy hitters here tonight, as you can see on screen. Some, some powerful men and women of God that are absolutely shaking the nation, that are reaching millions of people with the gospel. And I'm excited to have all of you guys on. I'm honored to have all of you guys on to the show. And I'm gonna now pass it to Pastor Mike while I start cross-posting it to all our Facebook pages. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Uh, listen, it's time to sound the alarm. I, I don't have to tell you, but some of you, I need to shake you and remind you that we are in a critical hour in human history. If you believe what I'm saying, that it's time for revival, that it's time for a, an awakening. We don't need religion as usual. We don't need church as Come usual. On. What we need is believers that will move past, like Isaiah says, 90 minute God. Is that right? 90 minute church. Yes. Come on. You know, you go, you go to a local church, they give you your favorite beverage. Like apostle Ryan Lestrange says, you got your favorite beverage in one hand and a bagel in the other. And uh, we need full surrender. This is a time like never before. And I just want to tell you your friends and family, they may not go to a church, but they will still go to a movie theater. And so God in his sovereign divine wisdom was trying to find a place where they would still go. And he opened up this opportunity for the Domino Revival. Uh, I am not a narcissist. This movie is not about me. This movie is actually about the movements that have started to happen pre-pandemic and then during the pandemic and now post-pandemic, it shows people from every walk of life. And what we have in common is that we all said yes. Radical surrender, radical sacrifice. We're just normal people who, who said, God, if you can use anyone, use us. We show live footage and, and we show live streams. We show footage of signs, miracles, wonders, and, and deliverances that happen uh, in parks. Um, you know, there are no paid actors, believe it or not. And this is all a documentary that features that. I've got some of my great friends that were kind enough to not just be here tonight, but also fly out to New York and film with me. We put this thing together. And if the red carpet premiere was any indicator of what America is going to respond with, I mean, we, I mean, you guys can, I'll turn it over to you here in a second, but you can attest to the fact that when the movie was over in Manhattan, and by the way, the last red carpet premiere that they had at that theater was the Avengers Endgame. And so, you know, a lot, it's crazy to me how like the body of Christ has been saying like, we need to take territory, we need to take the mountain of, uh, the, of entertainment. And then when we actually do it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, there's people that are still sitting on the bench that have not said, I'll, I'll jump in, I'll contribute, use my social media, God, use whatever I can, let's sell tickets, let's get people to the theater. But anyways, at the conclusion of the film at the red carpet, I had to go up to sort of give a speech 
just to rally people. And I couldn't even physically talk. I had to actually facilitate an impromptu intercessory prayer moment because leaders from all across America were just like Come gutted on. by the film. And I just want to say this because we've got cast members that weren't able to make it for the red carpet event, which is fine. But there were SBC, like Southern Baptist Convention leaders that were in the audience one of them came up to me after the film was over. He was shaking and he was like, Pastor Mike, and now that I've seen the film, I have a million person email list. The Lord told me, use it to get the word out about the film. And, and he was like, I have to, everybody has to see this film. And, and that is a Baptist. So I believe that this thing is where many streams come together to make a river that God uses to ignite revival in this nation. And we need to provoke, like with a righteous jealousy, we need to provoke the nations. We need the United Kingdom and you know South come Africa on. and Canada to see what's happening in this country and say for such a time as this. So I just want to stir you guys. Um, you know, Christians, and I'm 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 getting all my stuff out of the way in the beginning, and then I'm going to hand it over to the crew because I have a chip on my shoulder. I don't know if you can tell, but well, Christians are notoriously divided. There's 15 flavors of charismatic. There's 37 flavors of Pentecostal, and what Christians do, even Christian influencers and pastors, is they wait until somebody they trust or respect endorses something, and then when they say it's safe and they say it's cool, then everybody bandwagons and they jump on. We don't have time for that. So I just want to tell you straight up, like this is a one night only showing. You can't wait for the pastor that you like or you trust to finally say this movie's cool. We should get behind it. People are dying. People are addicted. People are committing suicides. We, we don't have time for division. And so my biggest message tonight, right off the jump, is don't even wait for us to get done with this broadcast. Hit the comment, the pinned comment for the tickets right now. If we can get less than 4,000 tickets in pre-sales right now, we, we have a really fighting chance to actually go into an extended run where it's more than one night. And that's our way of showing Hollywood we're done with your filth. We're done with your perversion. We're done with your unrighteousness and your wickedness. Stop feeding us demonic films. We want revival. We want Jesus on the silver screens. And by the way, we want to turn every auditorium into a sanctuary. Come on. And we want to turn every auditorium into what I'm calling a tabernacle in the wilderness where we host the Holy Ghost. Come on, Pastor Vlad. And we're going to be hosting the Holy Ghost in every auditorium. So this is an unprecedented thing. And um, matter of fact, last thing, and then I want to hear from the cast, but we sent out an email to over 10,000 pastors in America. Maybe the number's greater, but that's conservative. And we got responses from all over the United States from pastors who said, I want to I want to host an auditorium. I, my church is going to have a presence there. And we were reading the names of the churches that have decided Methodist churches, Presbyterian, Presbyterian churches. Baptist churches. And when we are reading the names of the churches today, our staff was like, isn't it amazing to see how God's bringing everyone together? So yes, there's been resistance. Yes, there's been division, but there's also been this supernatural unity amongst people who do get the vision and they do see by the spirit what God's trying to do. So I want to kick it over to the cast. I'll just throw it out there for anybody who wants to jump in. But um, this is an opportunity tonight for us to speak prophetically, publicly, and, you know, as of right now, it's 916 Eastern Standard Time. It's October 17th. I'm in New York City. Let's mark it. And I want to get some of the cast members saying, what do you see in the spirit happening in the theaters on October 24th? Because then the cool thing is we're going to get footage. People are going to crowdsource footage from all across America. And then we, what I want to do is take your prophecy and your vision that you say on the stream right now, and I want to combine it with uh the with with the footage of it actually happening i remember when come out in jesus name happened i jokingly prophesied that we were going to be using popcorn buckets uh, for vomit and then it was funny because <laughs> footage from all across america came out of people just throwing up demons and popcorn buckets you know so i want to know from you guys we have some of the most prolific prophetic voices in the world 
that are here on this live stream right now. What do you see God doing? Anybody that wants to jump Mike, in. Mike, if like, you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just tee off on this. You know, something similar we saw in 2020 was revival started spilling out of the church into living rooms, into people's homes, into families. And after watching this movie, I did not even sleep that night. I was up it, with my wife in the hotel. We couldn't sleep. We were so fired up. And I see people leaving this movie. It starts at seven o'clock throughout the United States. I see them leaving this movie and having all night prayer meetings. I see them leaving this movie and laying hands on their kids. I see this actually spilling into homes, spilling into marriages. I see marriages that are on the brink of divorce, on the brink of giving up. I see God supernatural, supernaturally healing marriages through this film. There's stories of restoration in this film. There's stories of uh, healing in this film. There's stories of deliverance. There are stories of women having a voice in the church once again in this film. There are stories of, and this is what I want to emphasize on, not the revivals of the past, which we honor and appreciate, but what is God doing right now? What is God doing in this generation? All of us here, we use our platforms to expose the darkness. We're always talking about, you know, what this community is doing, what that community is doing, what the alphabet community is doing, what the devil's doing. But this movie is about what is God doing right now? What is happening in the church? What is happening in the body of Christ? It's highlighting all of these ministries of, man, I want to see this happen. But it's, it's not just the ministries. The whole story is, it could happen in your family. Like I want to prophesy over everyone in the chat. There's 4,000 live right now watching. This domino revival is not about us. It's not about some celebrity ministers or pastors. This is about God moving in your kid's life, deliverance happening in your marriage, miracles happening in your family reunion, that, that church that you think is small and insignificant with just a few people, God breaking out his lightning and his fire to where something changes. Your church is never the same. Your marriage is never the same. Your family is never the same. I'm bringing my four daughters to see this movie. Some of you in the chat are saying, can I bring my kids? Yes! I'm bringing my kids and I'm, I'm going, Lord, let this get on them. Let this re spirit of revival awaken and let my kids burn with this. Let my kids burn with what you're doing in this hour. So this movie, don't be mistaken. This movie is not about celebrity pastors. This movie is not about popular YouTube preachers. This movie is platforming what God is doing in our generation. Friends, God is moving in our generation. Don't let the news media discourage you. God is up to something like he told Malachi. I'm doing something in your day you wouldn't believe even if someone told you. So my prayer, Mike, is that when people get out of this movie, they're going to be so on fire. They're not going to be able to sleep that night. They're going to be up in prayer. They're going to be having visions and dreams. And God is going to bring awakening to living rooms. He's going to bring awakening to families similar to what we saw in 2020. I'm praying for children to be saved, marriages to be restored. And then last thing I'm going to say, and I'll pass it to someone else here. I'm just letting everybody think here. I'm believing that our unsaved loved ones are going to get saved in this film. I brought a bunch of my unsaved friends and family. I know they went to see come out in Jesus name. They would never go to church. They will never go. They wouldn't go to church if I paid them, but they're like, oh, you're in a movie. And they thought some of them thought it was going to be like, you know, some drama, like the Titanic, like I was going to be acting or something, but they didn't know. Was, they didn't realize it was a documentary. Guys, this is a documentary, by the way, if you're like, we get to see Vlad act, we get to see Isaiah act or Apostle Ooh. Ryan Lestrange act. This is a documentary, but they thought it was cool. Old friends of mine, Mike, thought it was cool. You're going to be in a movie at the theaters. So use that. Say, hey, I have friends that are going to be in a movie. A movie, Come with me and buy them a ticket. Don't wait. Listen, let me prophesy that really quick. Your unsafe friends and family are not going to buy a ticket to this movie. You need to go and buy them a ticket and say, I have a ticket for you. I've already paid for it. This is what I told some of my unsafe family. I already bought it. I can't get a refund. I already have your seat. I know what number you're going to be sitting in. I'll buy you the popcorn. I'll buy you the Slurpee. And here's why. Is $12 worth them hearing the gospel? Is $12 worth them possibly getting lit on fire for God? If there's a 0.1% chance my unsaved cousin will come to this movie and get lit on fire, I'll buy him 10 tickets. Well, it's, and it's, again, it's not about ticket sales. It's about the gospel of the kingdom being preached and then the end will come. So this is a massive gospel crusade. At the end of this film, there will be a massive gospel crusade yeah. where tens of thousands of people are going to hear the gospel, receive deliverance, receive healing. And it's something you've never, it's something unlike anything you've ever experienced. I've never experienced being in a movie, like when we had come out in Jesus name and seeing in a secular movie where at the same time, the exorcism believer is going to be playing. And in the next theater, you're going to have the exorcism believer and the next theater, you're going to have believers doing exorcism. 
Come, Come on. on, somebody. Help me, Holy Ghost. Y'all are getting quiet up in the chat tonight. So we're, we're fighting back. We're not sitting back complaining and whining. Oh, the devil's out making more movies. Well, hey, we're going to make movies. We're going to get on the big screen, and we're going to see Revival. All right, I'm done. I'm all sweaty and fired up, y'all. <laughs> We're going to see Revival on, next Tuesday night. Come Listen, on, Revival next Tuesday. I want to hear, want to hear from some of you guys. What do you see happening in the spirit? What, what are you being stirred up for? You know what I love about this movie when we went and saw it is it's going to make people decide. And I think uh, there has been division in the church over the last two years. There has been lots of infighting in the church, but some of it, I think, has actually been good. It's made people realize where they actually are in their faith. In Corinthians, it says, test yourselves to see that you're actually in the faith. Yeah. And I think a lot of churches, it doesn't matter what denomination, where people are from, it's an eye-opener. It's an eye-opener during the pandemic response. And I think the pandemic response in 2020, 2021 was just a precursor. I think it's birth pangs. Like Jesus says, don't worry, it's just the beginning. Like the wars that are happening right now, don't worry. It's just the beginning. It's like, well, how bad are things going to get Jesus? Because this is pretty wild. It's like, I think we get an opportunity to decide in that theater. I, I was filled with passion. Like both my wife and I cried just remembering living in a 32 foot travel trailer with our two little kids and police coming to our door and death threats and fun stuff like that. But like compared to the rest of it, it's mild persecution. But I think people will get to decide who they love. Like, are you loving the stuff more? Are you loving following people more? Are you loving your denomination more? Are you loving X, Y, Z more? Or do you love his bride and do you love him? And do you just want to see us win? I'm so tired of winning battles on Sundays and not winning the war. Come not on. Not winning the war. Because all the politics stuff, all the war stuff, all the stuff that's happening in our culture, all that flows downstream from culture. And when the church gave up ground in places like theaters and said, oh, that's the devil, but let's make good art again. Let's make good things again. Let's put money into those things. Let's spend our money on those things. Let's let's spend $30 on a ticket. See if we can tip or tithe or give money to the churches that put money into it. I mean, just give all resources you can. Because I think sitting in that, even me, I was like looking at myself going, man, I got to step it up too. There's more coming. Like my secret place needs to get longer. I need to be with Jesus more. The presence is all that counts. Preparing the bride is all that counts. I need to get on the altar again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And you know what the funny part about it is? People are like, you guys are so crazy, you're so obedient, blah, blah, blah. People say that about us. We look at ourselves and go, it doesn't feel like that. Right. It doesn't feel like obedience. So good. It doesn't feel like like we did crazy stuff. It was just life in the kingdom. Like go for the adventure, swing for the fences. I think I think that's the story of this movie too, Mike, with you guys and the production team and everything that went into it. It was like, you know what? We're going to make a movie. It's like, how do we make a movie? We have no idea, but we're going to make an amazing movie. Come on. And by the way, you will get to see Mike act a little bit in this movie. Yes. Yeah. A little, a little bit. I was like, hey, <laughs> that's not live. <laughs> but I just, um, I'm just so excited for the church in general. I'm, ex I'm a church guy. I'm a local church guy. Always have been. Um, and really, uh, I don't think the local church is the hope of the world. Jesus is. Um, but I think his bride um, bringing the kingdom in so many aspects is just going to be huge. And the divide will be good. The divide will be good because Jesus always forced people to choose. A man on Come a cross, on. still on a cross, doesn't allow people to necessarily choose. They can put him in a corner. He can be a therapeutic deist, right? But a living man, Jesus, that's alive and seated at the right hand of the Father, the emperor of the universe, who's competently running the universe— makes people decide and the power of God in this movie actually shows people that. So I'm super stoked on it. Come on. So good. What else are you guys seeing? You know, I really believe that God's going to drop mantles of fire in this movie. So a lot Come of on. people, they are going to church. Uh, they are serving, they are doing this stuff, but they're discouraged. They're overwhelmed. They're trying to figure out how to pay their bills, how to live life. They're trying to figure out how to survive. You know, I live outside of Atlanta. Uh, Pastor Mike, you're in New York. Yeah. So there's a lot going on in the cities of America and around the world that people are distressed. They don't know how they're going to make it. About three weeks ago, I was trying to preach. We were having a Sunday night Maybe it was a healing service. I honestly don't remember so much happened, but we were having a Sunday night gathering 
And um, all of a sudden there was a young lady that, that they wheeled up to the front in a wheelchair and a couple of our prayer team was praying for her. And it was like the moment in the service, we're transitioning. We're trying to go to the next thing. And they're kind of like going off in prayer. And I'm like, okay, y'all, is this, is this in order? Is this out of order? I'm going to just watch and see what's going on. And all of a sudden this young lady in the wheelchair starts to rise up. Here's the backstory. She had climbed up to, it was National Suicide Prevention Day. Now I remember that because I had written that on my note card. I want to say something about it uh, and the awareness of it and how we need to pray for people that that's their struggle. So she had she had went to the CNN Tower, famous building here in Atlanta. She had climbed up on the fourth floor and jumped out in an effort to kill herself. She had wow. shattered most all the bones in her body. And the doctor said, we put you back together as best we can. She had not been able to walk since that time. She's wheeled in, in a wheelchair. The power of God arrests her and she's lifted out of the wheelchair and she begins to walk. Next week, she comes back on a walker. The next week, she come back doing something else. I don't remember what it was. And then the, the fourth week, she's just walking. The, the leg braces were off that first night. Now, that's a great miracle. But here's the thing. It touched her mother. People were messaging me going, I know this girl. I know her story. Come the on. fire of God hit that girl. And for the people that take the time to get to this movie and bring your friends, bring your half safe friends, bring your friends that that they, it's been a long time since they were radical for God and they used to be radical for God. Uh, bring your friends that are in ministry, but they've gotten weary. Bring them all. I believe that fire is going to meet them. And here's what I saw. I saw the spirit of the Lord throwing mantles down in this movie that people are going to be awakened because this movie tells uh, stories of progressive encounters and events that one Come thing on. led thing led to another thing. And God is saying, I'm going to weave you into the story of what I'm going to do in this hour. The world says it's dark. The enemy says, I've got you. But the Lord says, I'm about to revive you. And I'm going to cast a mantle in the midst of fire over your life, says the Lord. And I'm going to disrupt every demonic plan, demonic Come on. thought says demonic bondage i'm going to break and annihilate the spirit of suicide says the lord i'm going to bring hope to the hopeless and i'm going to bring a release to the captive but for many of you that that are unsure of your next step i hear the lord say your next is now and he's going to meet you in that domino revival movie you think you're going to support but god says you're not going to support you're going to be awakened and so pastor mike i really believe two things Fire is going to erupt in people's lives, as Isaiah already said, and out of the midst of fire, because the thing about fire, we like to celebrate fire, but fire always has a purpose. And one of the purposes of fire is that it's a consecration moment when Moses stops. And the bush is burnt, which, mind you, wood represents humanity. So burning bush says, I want to set people on fire. And when Moses stops to pay attention, that's a critical point. He stops to see what the Lord would say. When he pays attention, God says, I see I've got your attention. And God begins to speak. So God is going to throw mantles on people or make them aware of the mantle that's already there in the midst of this domino revival. So y'all better get ready because we have entered a time of fire. That's where we're at. And that's what's going to manifest in this movie. Oh, I feel so it right good. now. Come on now. We're, by the way, guys, so we're going to pray at the end of this broadcast. The point of us doing tonight was to gather together and pray. So towards the end, we're going to be all praying together as well. But man, that was such a good word right there. Yeah. And I just want to say, because there's so many of you guys are speaking into things, you know, and I'm just going to be that guy. I mean, if you, I'm here in New York city, I, I was literally invited to the mayor's mansion, Gracie mansion to meet with the mayor of New York city. After I did a video that went viral, I get an invite to the mayor's office at 11 PM, which is wow. super suspicious. <laughs> and I show up and they're playing my video. And so we're living in a very critical time where God is putting these golden megaphones to people's voice and giving them an opportunity to speak into situations. And I think about Daniel, I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Babylonian cultures. And so he will always raise up people and give them a voice, a voice of righteousness in the midst of Babylonian cultures. And so, you know, I was saying this Sunday to V1, but the false always comes first. Mm. And you see that over and over and over again in scripture, Ishmael before Isaac, you know, the false always comes first. Why? Because the enemy can see the dominoes being stacked by God. He, he can strategically look and discern what's going to happen next. So he tries to get up ahead of it and thwart it. And, and he doesn't come 
at, with a pitchfork and horns, he actually comes as an angel of light. Mm. And so I was thinking about how like this Hamas, this Hezbollah situation, what you're seeing is radicalization. And listen, I'm in New York City, so I'm in everybody else's future right now. And in the streets of New York City, you have people who are actually, you know, pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas, pro-Hezbollah. And there's this radicalization that's happening. And I say that because the false always comes first. I truly believe that this is a time, just like Parker said, where Christians need to decide, am I going, am I going to radicalize? <clears throat> what do I mean by that? I'm not talking about violence against people. I mean violence against principalities, violence against powers and mm-hmm. rulers and high places. Places. When are we going to go 100% all in? When are we going to take territory? When are we going to advance and stop being on the defensive? And so I think just as we are seeing these political things unfold, just as we're seeing things happen overseas, again, this is a precursor to what God is willing in the earth, which is people saying enough is enough. And one of the indicators, and I just want to help because we got thousands of people watching right now. One of the indicators that you are in the will of God is your, it starts to become offensive to your friends and family. Come They're going to start saying things like you've lost your mind. Yeah, I did lose my mind. I have the mind of Christ. Now, mm-hmm. when I was in my own mind, I was heavily medicated, <clears throat> filled with anxiety and depressed. I'm not in my right mind Preach. anymore. I'm in the mind of mm-hmm. Christ. And, and so this movie And I'm just telling you, this is kingdom propaganda to radicalize Christians to become what we were meant to be. When you watch other people's stories, it's going to provoke you. And how I knew that this film had, I mean, it's not a perfect movie, but how I knew I hit the mark is when literally Jesse and Parker are some of the most insane next level believers I've ever met in my life. And when Parker's like, man, this made me want to go deeper. I was like, can you go deeper? (laughs) Like, you know, can you radicalize more? So what's going to happen for many people watching is just like Apostle Ryan said, I think that people are going to come out of this film and be like, Lord, I'll sell everything. Lord, I'll do whatever it takes. Reckless abandon, no turning back. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be a catalyst. There's going to be many people, and I want to prophesy this and then turn it back over, but there's going to be many people that trace their spiritual lineage to this moment. This is going to be a moment of multiplication. It's going to be a moment. There's going to be thousands of ministries that actually trace their heritage to the to these movie theater moments where they're going to say, that's when I birthed the ministry. That's when I stepped in. That's when I, and, it, and it's, it's almost like a Genesis moment where people are going to say, mm-hmm. that's when I decided that I'm going to write the worship songs and actually release it. And so it's, it's, there's, I don't think that we can fully calculate the fullness of what God has intended for this. Um, and hopefully you guys are tapping that pin comment and getting your tickets, like literally as we speak, but Jonathan, I want to talk to you, black voices movement. Um, you know, you have gone viral several times. You've written songs that have been sung throughout the entire earth. Entire earth. I don't want to, I don't want um, to, um, oh, no, I think I'm you're playing through his speaker. I think but what do you see speaker. God doing? I feel like there's going to be a, a lot of worship that's birthed in this movie. We have three original V1 worship songs, um, but also we prominently featured a song that you co-wrote. Um, so what do, what do you see God doing through through worship? Um, well, first of all, um, I just want to say it's such an honor to be on with you guys. Um, so much friends and family, and I feel the presence of God really, really strongly right now. Um, what I feel um, more than anything, just as we've been talking, the Lord's been speaking to me, is that I think that we're entering into an era in the body of Christ um, where worship is going to be characterized by the demonstration of the power of God. Um, and I think that the Lord is anchoring our sound. He's anchoring our position um, in worship around the throne room. And I think this movie is a catalyst for the effects of throne room worship when God is exalted over and above everything in our lives that would try to to present itself as stronger or greater than him, he shows up in mighty um, power. And I I believe that's going to translate to tangible miracles. Um, There's going to be such a purity and a holiness to the sound that's going to erupt that I believe legitimately people's chemistry is going to change in the presence of God. And I think that not just the music that's featured in the film, but even the music that will be inspired by the film and inspired by the people who are represented in the film, that power is going to break out in people's lives 
where the the tangible anointing of God is going to be released on people. I don't know if anybody's had these kind of experiences, whether through a sermon or through a song where you literally were doused with the manifest glory and power of God. And it seemed that a supernatural essence was awakened in you for you to be able to do things that you couldn't do before. There are things like that that happen all the time in the presence of God through the place of worship and more than just the songs or the, or the sounds, but the focus and the attention on Jesus and Jesus alone. And what I really believe in this hour is that there is a hunger and a conviction that God's people are arising with for the tangible manifestation of the dunamis power of God for miracles, signs, and wonders. And as God is enthroned in the hearts of his people, we're going to see infirmity dissipate from people's bodies. Come on. We're going to see demons leave people, even just through the presence of God. Even just through the place of worship, we're going to watch where the tangible manifestation of God's glory begins to erupt. I literally believe it's going to happen in theaters where it's not just going to be a conviction of prayer, but there's going to be an eruption of worship, the likes of which that many of these cities have never seen. And tangible miracles are going to begin to break out and that it's going to literally start a chain effect where the worship and the, and the potency of the power of God will be such that you cannot escape. Come what on. God wants to do in you in those rooms. And so I'm excited because I don't believe it's just going to be the theaters, but the theaters are going to be a tipping point to churches, to households, to gatherings, to outside events where power is going to come to the front street in the body of Christ. And the demonstration of God's glory is going to make all the difference. Come on. Come on. That is so good. For those of you who have tickets and you're ready, I want you to have your camera ready because I, I do believe that we're going to see many, many miracles. And, you know, it's so funny because I had prophesied probably a couple, I think it was like two or three months ago. It just one of those words that just leapt up out of me that Azusa mm -hmm. is going to happen again, but this time it'll be filmed. Come on. And I I, I, I feel like because, you know, there were some dramatic things that happened at Azusa. It's all word of mouth you know, first eyewitness kind of things, but I just prophesied, I said, I, I believe Azusa is going to happen again, but this time it's happening on film. And so I want you to have your cameras ready and come expect it. You know, again, the false comes first. You know, I was featured in a movie called Cessationist and <laughs> Most an of us entire were. <laughs> movie was literally devoted to, to explaining how God doesn't do these things. And I'm going to be that guy and bring Don't it up. Don't hold back, because... bro. It's our stream. Don't hold back. I, I, yeah, you guys could just sign off the Zoom right now if you don't want to be associated with me. But I mean, I, I'm I'm getting messages from people. Yo, Pastor Mike, you're you're in this movie, blah blah blah. And I just said, man, you know, it's so funny because we're talking about signs, miracles, and wonders, but we are not elevating that above the gospel. As a matter of fact, in this movie, some of you guys may or may not know. I mean, I spent two years under Tim Keller. Uh, here in New York City, he's renowned for his, uh, I mean, he's known for the gospel. There's a brutal, unapologetic gospel presentation in the film. So if you get nothing else out of the movie, you will hear the gospel. And we were very intentional about placing that in the movie. Um, but but anyways, wherever Jesus is being preached and the true gospel is being declared, you will also hear demons saying, why are you tormenting me? You Come will on. also see medically verifiable miracles. And we're not chasing the healer but wherever jesus is there will be healing and so yes. you know somebody you, you've heard christians say that thing well we don't seek him for his um hand we seek him for his face but when you're seeking his face his hand is not that far from him uh, from on. his face and so it's like this movie I, you know it's i think it's very important that we push back against the doctrine of demons that are that's trying to convince people that god is not doing these things today as a matter of fact one of the things that i did very intentionally with the film was show prophecy when it was told and when it was fil fulfilled. And I just thought it was hilarious. Like I'm in the cessationist movie. And when I come up on screen, they, they call me a prophet. I don't even regard myself as a prophet. I'm like, I guess I just got an upgrade. <laughs> Uh, cause <laughs> I'm in a major movie you. with the title profit. <laughs> Come on now. And, and so, um, but again, I said, look at the timing that film came out before my film. I didn't know their movie was coming out. Would have loved if they would have interviewed me for it. I at least have been amicable about having a conversation instead of a monologue. And really this movie we show, and I, I love, there's a, a moment in the film and I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but we show Shane winnings in a park 
And and as Shane's in a park, this girl comes out of a wheelchair. It's cell phone footage. But be, because Shane had the wherewithal to follow up with her a year later, she's got all the medically verifiable results of it. So we did do diligence to show miracles, but also show miracles that um, the people followed up with them at some time later and it still remained. And so, you know, I tried to complicate it for the cessationist without knowing they were going to do a movie before our movie. So it's just very, very important that you guys in the theater say the the Bible is not the story of what happens. It's the story of what always happens. He healed back then. He's healing now. Come on. There were prophets back then. There's prophets now and and capture these moments on film. And can um, I say something as well, Mike? I think, too, in the movie, in. there's such a holy conviction. There's such a, a desire, even in my life, I had for holiness after. And I'm going to help everyone watching. There's thousands of people in the chat right now. Don't waste your money on Halloween costumes this year because it's going to be canceled in Jesus' name. After you watch this movie, Halloween is canceled for 2023. This is the hour to consecrate yourself. And some of you in the chat say, well, what am I supposed to do if I don't celebrate Halloween? How about try having a prayer meeting? I mean, imagine having a prayer meeting at your house for once. Like, I really do believe there's going to be such a conviction in this movie. It's going to change the way you live your life. It's not just going to change what you do on Sunday. It's going to change the way you live your life. So I just wanted to go on, get on here and say 2023 Halloween's canceled. And then I also wanted to just uh, spotlight Jeremiah Johnson. I know he has something stirring. If you guys don't know Jeremiah Johnson, he is a prophetic voice to the nation. He's given a lot of us in this call right now legitimate prophetic words. In fact, for my life, I've had three or four legitimate prophetic words from him that no one else knew about. I was freaked out when he gave them to me because I'm like, how did you know that? Nobody knows that, but they really did steer my life and steer some of my destiny. And so Jeremiah, I would love to hear about anything the Lord has spoke to you about this movie or you were there at the theater, you saw the movie, you and your daughter are both. I won't give anything away. I'm, I'm having a hard time, Mike, not yeah, spoiling no anything tonight. No I'm spoilers. having a hard time, but you and your daughter were in the film. What did you think about the movie? And then is the Lord speaking to you about anything in regards to this film? Yeah, you know, I believe that the Domino Revival movie is going to be a lifeline to the Elijahs of God. I really believe that Jezebel and all her evil spells have been waging war against so many who carry the spirit and power of Elijah. And God has just been speaking to me about as people sit in the theater uh, the spirit of Jezebel is going to be dismantled. And the reason why the Domino Revival, it's a lifeline to the Elijahs of God, because it's going to shout to this nation, there are still 7,000 others that have not bowed their knee to Baal. And I just see men and women who have been uh, just oppressed and discouraged by the spirit of Jezebel when they watch this film, it's going to be their lifeline. They're going to wake up. They're going to sign up again. They're going to re-enlist. And there's just family revival, generational revival that's going to come. But this is a pick-me-up. This is a fresh breath of air. If you're watching and you're just pondering, should I go or not? I just think there's so much encouragement. There's so much personal revival that's going to mark the Elijahs of God. And again, I just see Jezebel, the manipulation, the control. This Come movie on, is going to shake denominationalism. Uh, this is going to challenge key leaders who are propping up demonic doctrines of cessationism. It's going to shake them to their core. And I see the Holy Spirit coming strongly upon his Elijahs of God. 7,000, 70,000, 700,000 have not yet bowed their knee to Baal. And th this movie is amazing. It rocked our family. We're we're buying up a theater here in North Carolina, sounding the alarm. We're, we're so excited. Fire, fire. Vlad, let's hear from Vlad. What do you got, bro? I know you got something stirring up over there. I'm just receiving right here. Um, <laughs> Come on. I'm, I missed the red carpet, so I'm, I'm having my own red carpet right now. <laughs> this, is, this is just incredible. <laughs> Um, but I'm very gracious to Pastor Mike and Julie for letting me see the movie, though I wasn't able to be at the um, red carpet premiere. Some of you saw the news after 13 years of believing for children yes. when doctors said we cannot have children. Uh, we're pregnant, so we're uh, so it was a, my wife couldn't travel, didn't want to be without her uh, there at the premiere. 
And um, but I am very excited for this film as I watched it at home. And interestingly, a week later, Pastor Mike, I actually met the little boy that's in the film. Come on. And I'm not wow. going to say anything more about the story yeah. because it starts with the boy and then it ends with the boy. It starts about what God did encountering a young man. And then there is this connection there that's there, which I think it's very important for parents to bring your children. Yes. This is not a movie where you kind of like want to keep the children away. You want to bring your children because you don't know if your child is going to be that person, a man or a woman that is going to watch this film and go from trauma to transformation. And Come they on. will go from experiencing rejection, maybe growing up in broken family home, and maybe you feel like you didn't provide them the necessary foundation and resources, but the Holy Spirit will compensate that by using this film and really sparking a seed of revival in them. You know, and I really, I was a youth pastor for about 14 years and I've struggled as a youth pastor for about 10 years, uh, not seeing the breakthrough both in the church and not seeing any kind of breakthrough outside of our church through our church because I believe that God wants to do revival in us as Christians so we can take that revival and create a reformation in our society come on revival is not so that we can just have prayer meetings fast and pray and just go in church all the time and just live for ourselves serving God though that is what revival is going to do and I believe in fasting I believe in consecration I believe in uh, morning prayers night prayers all of that small groups but if a revival doesn't turn to reformation in the society in schools in universities in media in our movie theaters then that revival really does not it didn't fulfill its ultimate goal. And I believe that this domino revival is going to spark a revival in children, in young people. Yeah, yes. And why is it crucial for young people to have a spark of revival? Because young people are the salt at the source. If you remember the time when the poisonous waters um, started to people couldn't drink the poisonous waters and they came to prophet and the prophet said I want you to take salt and put it at the source the source of our society's problems they start in schools because kids get indoctrinated and they experience things in schools and in our universities that yeah. is the source of our future leaders future doctors future movie stars, future actors, and future politicians. The school system is the source. And that's where every teenager and every young person is going to. What this movie wants to do is to revive them so they can become the salt at the source. Because once they become the salt at the source in their school, in their college, something's going to happen. Our waters are starting, will start to get healed, you know, and I believe that there are youth pastors and leaders and ministers who are not experiencing that breakthrough. They're not experiencing that revival. And when they will come to this movie, they will be surprised that everyone that is walking in that revival today are ordinary people. They're not special, but they are obedient and they are surrendered. And I think what this movie will do is to cause people to understand that we are not celebrities. But there is, an, there is one thing that follows through all of our life that's common denominator. You know, we look different. We're from different backgrounds. We have different places where we live and different histories. But there's one thing we have in common is that we do live a life that's not perfect, but it is surrendered. Come on. It is on the altar. And I think that people will be motivated by that and something will spark in them. This can happen to me. This can happen to my ministry. There could be a revival in my youth group. There could be revival in my home. And then this movie also provides that recipe for that revival. And once the revival begins to hit our homes, once the revival begins to hit youth groups, once the revival begins to hit churches, it's a matter of time where we have to allow that revival to get out and go into our schools, go into our movie theaters, go into our, go to our public arena. Like, the testimony this happened just today when last week actually we got kicked out of one of our schools so we we go to schools every tuesday to preach the gospel uh, during lunch so we're in about eight schools right now 
And so one of the schools we go in and the teacher has a Ouija board on the wall, but we get kicked out. They wow. have alphabet community flyers in the hall, but our club gets rejected by the principal, though the student body accepts it for us to preach the gospel. So they kick us out. And of course, we scheduled a meeting with the main principal of the director of all the schools. We said, we're going to sort this out. While we get kicked out, our students go into the class and they're like 13, 14, 15. They start to preach the gospel in the schools. And then about 20 students give their life to Christ last week. We meet with the main superintendent, you know, they're like, yeah, you guys are pushing religion and ta-da-da. And I'm like, well, you're allowing homosexuality to be pushed because see, I'm passionate for schools. Why? Because that's the source of next 50 years. That's where the leaders are being built. And God wants to spark. He wants to bring salt back within our young people so that they will go back to the source. I'm not against homeschooling, not against Christian schools, but at the same time, somebody needs to go to the source. And the God doesn't need many of us. He just needs the real ones, the real salt. And so the real salt goes to the source and the students become changed and transformed. Today, to Tuesday, right now it's Tuesday night. So about six hours ago, we were allowed back into some of those schools and we've seen... 17 brand new students who gave their life to Jesus for the first time in a public school and 40 students for the first time heard about Jesus Christ. We're seeing right now hundreds, sometimes up to 400 teenagers show up on Sunday night youth service. Half of them, parents do not go to church. They are interceding for their parents. And so I believe that this movie is going to be a catalyst because the stories that you will hear, and I'm not going to spoil anything, the stories is what we did, what they did, what Pastor Mike did, the transformations, the seeds that were planted when we were young, not when we were 40, not when we were 50, but when it started at 16, it started at 17. So I really believe there's that 16 year old, there's that 14 year old that's going to come with his mom, it's going to come with his dad and something is going to be planted and his life trajectory of his future is going to shift and he and she will be a salt at the source. Come on. So good. Come on, that Jenny and Stephen. What, what do you right got? there? We're flowing. Wow. Core group in the you house, <laughs> core group in the chat, core That's group dope. all over the place. <laughs> They're so representing so strong good. in my chat right now. <laughs> yeah. um, to tell you the truth, I was thinking about, you know, when you were talking about the different denominations and seeing all the different denominations that are going to this movie, I think it's going to be a, sh- a earth shaking moment because people are going to, you're going to have Baptists, you're going to have Pentecostals, the Methodists, and they're going to be going to these church, uh, these, this uh, theater. And, you know, the Lord's going to do the work. You know, we, we don't have to do anything. They're going to see it on the film and, and make, they're going to start to think to themselves, well, maybe we don't have it all figured out. You know, maybe, maybe there is more than just being a cessationist, you know, maybe there is more to, to doing deliverance. I think it's going to change the minds of people worldwide you know it's gonna it's gonna break out deliverance in the baptist churches i think it's gonna break out deliverance Come in on. the catholic churches i just think people are gonna see this movie and it's gonna change a lot of the way they see things in their community a lot of the way they see things in their congregation um i believe that the people that are going to go see the movie as well they're going to take it back to their church you know and they're going to notice that not everything in their church is the same as what they've seen in the movie they're going to start to wonder why you know why don't we have deliverances in our church you know why are we laying hands on the sick and not seeing them recover you know why aren't demons being cast out i think things are gonna it's gonna be a dump just like the movies the domino revival is not you know it's not a coincidence it's gonna be a revival that sweeps through the nation it's gonna sweep through the church it's gonna sweep through the congregation it's gonna start in the pastors i see it i see just a a revival starting in the pastor's heart wow. and some of the preacher's hearts and, and even some of the youth, the youth ministers are going to see things. They're going to see it in a different light and they're going to take this back to the church. And it's going to be a, just a revival. It's going to sweep through this nation. Come yeah, on. I agree. I, I literally broke down and started screaming, crying. Like I went into full on travail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't even know what anybody else was doing around me. I didn't care. I got on my knees in a dirty theater floor with soda stains and popcorn all over and that beautiful dress. And I didn't even care anymore. Literally the Holy spirit began to pray through me. Mm. And the reason why I was groaning and the reason why I was crying is because the Lord began to show me what was going to take place 
all across America when this thing hits. It is a bigger than what anybody could even fathom. Come on. No eye has seen, even with come out in Jesus' name, and I believe that was a, a spark of what the Lord wants to do in this year. I saw massive amounts of people being saved from the spirit of death that was about to grip their life. I literally saw suicide letters that were already written out. The plans had already been laid out of how they were going to do it, being ripped to shreds. I saw teenagers being able to confess to the parents what they mm. were going through. I saw so many people getting free from death, suicide, depression, anxiety, fear, it was such a massive thing. It was like you couldn't go to the theater without being changed. And no one's expecting this. They're expecting a great movie. They're yeah. expecting, wow, we're going to go support Christian content. They're not expecting this. I'm telling you, when you get revival, you get all that revival has. And what revival has is deliverance, salvations, restorations, marriages restored. I, I believe that there is going to be an outbreak of evangelism. Come on, Outbreak Janina. of evangelism. People that have been dormant, sitting on the sidelines, just chilling, waiting for the assignment. I'm just waiting on my calling. They're going to awaken to the callings right there in that chair. And I'm telling you, it's not a, it's not by coincidence, Pastor Mike and Julie, that you guys have this movie going out right now. In the midst of wars and yeah. rumors of wars and all kinds of unrest all over the world right now. What happens when there is some kind of conflict and tension and fear is abroad? What happens is revival begins to spring out of the earth. Yes. What happens yeah. is the church begins to awake. What happens is Come the on. real remnant gets to those front lines. Yes. I'm telling every single person on here, core group, you need to be sounding off in the comments and sharing this video. You are not going through deliverance training. You did not watch 10 of Isaiah's deliverance videos on YouTube and all of Vlad's deliverance videos and all of Pastor Mike's deliverance videos for no reason. Come you on. are about to be put into action in that yeah. theater. You better be ready. You better be prayed up. And you better be living pure and holy because when you begin to see those demons manifest, Somebody needs to spring into action. It is not going to be the time to look around and wait for the pastor to stand up. You get up and you do deliverance. You lay hands on that person that's in the wheelchair and begin to say, get up in the name of Jesus and walk. I believe Lord. that people are going to be so blown away. They're going to have to kick us out. I'm serious. Yeah. People are going to get kicked out and so it's okay because guess what honey the parking lot is free they can't kick you out the parking lot <laughs> come Take on it there but i begin to see i wrote down what i saw that day i saw this being a record of suicide prevention happening now i'm serious with this mm. there are numbers that they can actually look at and say it's this high it's this high it's this high when the movie goes out they're going to say it's so interesting that those numbers have dropped yeah significantly on the day of October 24th. Yes. I began to see, like you were just saying, pastors are going to be set on fire. There is going to be such a demand from the people that when they go back to the churches, the, the pastor is going to say, you know what? Open up the altar calls. Come on, Jenny. Let's go. If you can heal and get down here right now. It's not going to be church as usual anymore. It's going to be church as spiritual. And one domino is going to hit and the next Come church on. hit. You know what happens when the dominoes are up like this? There's a separation and there's a gap in between every single one of them. But on October 24th, I believe that the Lord is going to begin to connect the dots through all of us. And we're going to link arms. And we are going to see our cities shaken for the glory of God. Playtime in the church is over. Come on. It's over. We're not going back to the old way. Like we used to say, I can't wait for COVID to be over so we can get back. I'm not going back to that. What are we going Come back on. to? Sitting on pews, not doing anything? No, the church has left the building. We need to go and win the loss. I seen suicide coming down. I see pastors on fire, churches totally uh, wiping out the whole structure of the thing. I believe in order. I get that. And I know that there is a godly order that looks chaotic to the religious police and to the religious folk. But I'm telling you, God is going to do something. 
I saw the dominoes dropping. And for all the ladies, please just type in the comments. Whoop, whoop. If you are a woman in ministry, if you're a lady that's on the sidelines thinking you can't do ministry, if you're a mama in the kitchen holding babies and holding the fort down, I'm telling you, Come ladies, on, you need to make sure that you are in this theater. Yeah, I'm telling you what I know, because for too long, they have not not everybody on here, of course, but <laughs> the church Come world has tried to silence ladies in ministry and yes. Pastor Mike has been so gracious. I can't tell you how many times he's messaged me and encouraged me. I cannot tell you. And Pastor Julian said, we want to make sure that women are highlighted in this. Like that was dear to their heart. Oh, I don't want to spoil stuff, but just seeing the different ladies. I know um, Jesse's not on here, but oh my gosh, to see Jesse, to see the woman in the movie that begins to just sing this song. I'm not going to say her name, but let me tell you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> y'all. And it ain't me. It what it Mind I man. was I was blown away. Yes. I'm not kidding. I'm not I'm not telling any stories. This is not Best hype. Part of movie. I know Isaiah said, this is not hype, hype, hype. This is what Isaiah always says. This is real. <laughs> but you know what? I literally had chills all over my whole yes. body. Me too. I was sitting next to Pastor Greg and Pastor Ty and Kiara. I felt like our whole row was the country row and the ghetto row all together. And we were just ah, ah, doing all this stuff in the theater. I was like, oh my God, it was amazing. And so I could go on and on. It was so powerful, but deliverance teams, get ready. Yeah, yeah get ready, teams, come on. Get ready, get yourself to these theaters. You need to be there. Don't say, well, I'm just gonna wait and see if they, if they end up streaming it another day. No. You need to be there. We all need to be united on that day. And I'm telling you, whole entire cities are going to be transformed by the glory of God. Come on. Yeah, let me, let me just address say something real quick. Go ahead. Go for it. Yeah, real quick, because there's thousands of people watching. So let me explain this to you. There's very strict restrictions and protocol on what I can do and what I can't do. So I want to say this on this live stream and make sure you guys help me spread the word about what I'm going to say. So I asked permission. So, well, let me back up. So the movie company came to me and they said, we have the capability to allow you to live stream across all the theaters. By the way, just today, 22 theaters were added. And then amongst uh, the existing theaters, they're adding additional time. So we are making a statement right now. For those of you who are like, oh, it's not in my hometown, check again. They may yes. have added it. But anyways, the movie company was like, hey, Mike, if we gave you an opportunity to go live across every single theater, you know, would you take that? I said, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. And so this is one of America's largest syndicated revival services ever. So, and then I went a step further again, props to Greg Locke, because with come out in Jesus name, he was pioneering. He was put, he was breaking some new ground. Well, for his film, the last scene of the movie hit then the, which I, it was me by the way. And I jumped up out of my seat and there was that whole thing. And then the credits rolled and then he came up live. But I believe in Jehovah sneaky. I, I live in New York city where people don't, they have an attention span of, you know, of a gold goldfish. So I was like, what if the last scene of the movie hits and before people even get a chance to get up and leave, I come up live, then the credits go after that. And they were like, no one's ever asked that. Let us figure it out. Technically, if we could do it, they came back to me. They're like, you know what? You can do it. So like for those of you who are going to be with your friends and family and coworkers, the last scene of the movie is going to hit then boom, I'm coming up on the live stream. And then we're going to say, everybody stand up and let's have church in the movie theater. And I need you. Now, here's the thing. I cannot explicitly release people and say like, okay, now get them because there's so much of what we're doing that scares them so badly. Like the legal implications, I don't even want to get into it online and like mess anything I'll up. I'll say it for you 20... so they could sue me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's so many legal implications. So here's what's going to happen though. I'm going to be, le I'm going to have my worship team with me. You're going to see me in the live stream and I'm going to start breaking curses, casting out demons. We're going to start, I mean, leading people to Christ, sinner's prayer, like salvation moment. But here's the thing. I need you. Like, I'm going to be telling people, raise your hand if you're suicidal and you're ready to cancel your suicide. When you see somebody raise their hand, you go to them and you help facilitate that moment and minister to them. I need, like, just like Jenny said, all hands on deck. Come, Come on. on. I mean, whole families are going to be changed. 
I know you guys haven't seen the movie yet. We don't want, we're trying not to ruin it with the spoilers. It's hard. But here's the thing, like <laughs> I, I did the Domino Revival. That's partly how this thing happened. I cashed out my retirement again. I cashed out my savings again. I told my wife as a lead pastor of a multi-site national church, I'm going to inconvenience my family and we're going to travel the entire U.S. and we're going to start revival. And that's partly what we show in the movie. But every single church I went to in America, there were people who were secretly and 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 quietly dealing with suicide. And I asked them, would you come out of hiding? And would you be willing? And it was lead pastor's daughters coming wow. forward, snot pouring out wow. of their nose, weeping. The whole pastoral st staff, we had no idea. So that's what's going to happen. I mean, I'm going to be calling people out of obscurity out of darkness out of hiding and when you see hands go up i need all the prayer warriors all the breakers all of the core core warriors everybody from every tribe it's it's almost like finally we got an enemy big enough where we have to unite to come take this on thing. now so i'm just for those of you okay a couple quick things because i want to hear from a few more people but i just want to say that at, say at this juncture because jenny had mentioned people in parking lots i do believe we're going to see parking lot revivals in the theaters i believe that we saw asbury and asbury happened in one location but I believe that we are going to see Asbury's all over America. There's going to be people telling stories. We didn't even leave the parking lot till the very next day. The sun came Come on. Out. We're going to see footage of it. But here's the other thing. I really believe that America is going to be saying, okay, now what? Evangelism is going to break out. We're going to do everything we can to steward this thing. But I, I felt like the Lord was showing me um, Times Square, Times Square. So I would need you guys to help me pray. We are 95% approved. Again, even the fact that I was at Gracie Mansion in the mayor's uh, in the mayor's mansion was crazy. So um, no November 6th, we are 95% approved to actually shut down Times Square Come on. to do a what? domino revival event. So and then, then, like matter of fact, and this is like, and I need you guys to pray because they're pushing the permit through. They backdated stuff. This There is favor. I And I, I can't say too much, but I had a councilman come to our service on Sunday in New York City, come into my office. He's bawling his eyes out. And he's like, we are trying to push this thing through. We need revival in New York City because, and this is what the mayor told me. What happens in New York City happens in America, and what happens in America happens in the world, which makes the faith leaders of New York City the most important leaders in the world. Mike, we need revival. And so if if November 6th happens, we literally will shut it down, tens of thousands of people in New York City, and the world will watch. And, and so I need you guys to pray, because when I say 95%, if you know New York City, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and so be praying for that. And then, um, so that's November 6th, then what I'm going to, and then I want to kick it back, but October 20th, which is this Friday, we're going to be doing a premiere of like a, a little snippet. We're doing like a extended preview of the movie and we're going to be doing it through my channel. So that's this Friday. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to gather, we're going to spam the chat that's my wife coughing. Um, she shows up in the movie too. Yeah. She's catching a healing right over my shoulder right now. Um, <laughs> but anyways, we are going to be doing, uh, we're this Friday, we're going to ask everybody around the nation to begin to join together in prayer. We actually have pastors that have committed to opening up their homes there. They have snacks and food and they're getting everybody together. And we're going to have a time of travailing, a time of prayer, a time of spiritual warfare, a time of intercession. And then we're going to show like an extended preview of the movie this Friday. So that's what's happening this Friday. Then October 24th, the movie happens. And then as soon as I get official confirmation confirmation from New York City about um, November 6th, we'll blast it like crazy. So, let, Craig. Can I go? Yeah, let, let me yeah, say something please, really quick, well, Mike, just to address the chat. I'm monitoring the chat and all the pages. Everyone keeps asking, what's the name of the movie? It's the Domino Revival. They're asking, what day is it? October 24th. That's next Tuesday. How do I find a theater? We keep we keep pinning and spamming the comment. You need to go to the ticket website, Fathom Events. It's right there in everyone's page, and you can find your theater in your area. And then the la uh, last thing I want to address is people are saying, my pastor won't let me go. Listen, okay, I'm going to get all of you in trouble here. We're all local church pastors. We all love the local church. 
Your pastor is not your master. I want you guys to say that, say that to yourself. Your pastor is not your master. <laughs> it blows my mind that your pastor didn't care you go watch a horror movie last week, but he's so upset you're oh. watching a revival movie. So this Preach. is your permission as a grown woman and a grown adult to disobey your pastor if he says, don't go watch a Christian movie. I, I was a part of a church years ago where they all took the whole church to go watch Twilight. And this was like, what, nine years ago? They went to watch the vampire <laughs> movie together. So if churches can go see horror movies together, you can go see a revival movie together. If your pastor kicks you out of the church for going and seeing this movie, it probably wasn't the right church. And I'm saying that as a local pastor, I've given 13 years of my life to the local church. We all love the local church, but I just find it very... I'm going to say it nicely, even though we're on our, our pages, I can say what I want. I find it very insane that pastors are telling their congregation, don't go see a revival movie. Crazy. What are they afraid of? Are they afraid of you getting delivered? Okay, and the last thing I'm going to say is, yeah. I, I heard the Lord say this, and I'm going to toss it over to Craig, is I heard the Lord say while Jenny was sharing, get ready to baptize your family in your bathtub. So some of you don't know this. I'm going to tell you something that you might not know. Your bathtub is the perfect size to do a baptism. So you go see the movie, your friends and family get radically saved, and you say, hey, it's nine o'clock. Why don't we go to my house? We could baptize you right now, just like they did in the book of Acts. They baptized them immediately. So I want to challenge you. Well, Isaiah, I know some of you in the chat are saying, I'm not a pastor. You don't have to be a pastor. Those people in the Bible that weren't leaders that were baptizing, you don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to graduate sem seminary, cemetery, seminary. You don't have to have a Bible college degree. You can baptize your friends and family in your bathtub. So get your bathtubs ready, get prepared, get the towels out, get the extra change of clothes, and be ready after the movie when the altar call ends. Hey, do you want to go to my place and get baptized? And then possibly pray into the midnight hours, okay? So I wanted to say that. With that being said, uh, let's toss it over to Craig. What do you think, Craig? I know you've been chomping at the bit as well. All of us, listen, this is what happens when you oh, get a bunch waiting. This is what happens when you get 10 preachers on a broadcast. Everybody's going <laughs> to exactly. fire it up. Hey, I just want to say, I just want to start by saying what an honor it is to be in the film. Thank you, Pastor Mike and Julie. And uh, also, I don't think this needs to be said, but I think I can speak on behalf of all of us. For anybody watching this, you're going to watch the replay of this. 2 Corinthians 4, 5 says, We don't exist to preach about ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for his sake. And so we are not celebrities in the kingdom. Come on. In fact, Jesus' definition of Fame in the kingdom of God is that people would see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. And that is our only hope and our only goal. And I just want to say this. I think maybe in this group I represent, I've never been like a full cessationist, but <laughs> I was definitely like on the edge, you know. So let me just say this. I think one of my anointings is to speak to the people that are skeptical. My guess is most people watching this stream, you're probably a little used to this. You're probably embracing this. But if there's anybody that's skeptical, I'm your guy. I, I I stood in the back. I doubted. I, I, it wasn't just that I didn't know about this. I was angry about this stuff. But I've come, come to on, understand Craig. and believe that the fullness of the gospel is for today. Like everything, tongues, prophecy, healing, deliverance. I've never, I'm the last person in the world to ever do a deliverance. And I stood up in, in my church a month ago and, and walked them through renunciations and deliverance. And so Come on. I just agree with what others have said. And Jenny and, and some others have already said this, that we're just not living in plastic Christianity time anymore. 90s Christianity, Ken and Barbie Christianity, where you just go to church, paint on a smile and go home and live your life. It's not about an hour or two on Sunday morning. If the gospel's real, if Jesus really stepped out of heaven for us, then it's it should affect our whole life. And so I'm a, I'm honored to be in this video, but this is what I this movie, but this is what I know. I think we all know this that it's not about October 24th, and it's not about even though powerful things are going to happen in the theater on October 24th, but it's about what happens from October 24th yes. from this movie. And so it. The, the goal is not that people would come and look at us and think, wow, Isaiah's awesome, Mike's awesome. We could care less if you know our name. What we care about is that the Holy Spirit gets a grip on your heart, on. births some fire inside of you, and that you leave the theater and go and walk out what it is that God's called you to. Because the truth is, God hasn't called every single one of us to the same thing. But whatever God's called you to do, if you do that, that's success in your life. So God has a divine design for your life. And I hope and I pray that you'll walk it out and that this film will just be a spark towards that. Oh, that so is so good. good. 
So good, Craig. You know, it's funny is like when I selected the cast for the movie, everybody's like, I don't get it. And then when you see the movie, you're like, my mind is blown. Now I get it because each person had a specific assignment. And Craig actually spoke to a lot of skepticism in the film as well. So, by the way, I'm getting ready to birth a movie on the 24th, but Jesse's here, uh, eight months pregnant. Hey. <laughs> She's also getting ready to birth something. But we missed you, and we're so glad that we're here. You were raising up an army and, and teaching, um, and you were able to jump in. So I want to give you an opportunity, Jesse. You actually, and I want to acknowledge you publicly as a prophet you are a very powerful prophetic voice. God's used you mightily. And we've been taking a moment to basically say, like, what do we see? What is God doing? And I'd love to hear what you're seeing. Yeah, I just like definitely um, almost got arrested. I was driving so fast from our school. To <laughs> our school. Uh, I'm so fired up. I, I, I told Parker the whole time I was in the theater, I just felt fire just burning in me. I was grabbing Parker's hand, just squeezing it because I just like I couldn't control it. I just wanted to scream while I was in the theater. And I truly believe I even just feel it right now that like unction of the Holy Spirit. Like I believe this movie is so catalytic to revival. I've been telling our team, I'm like, weird. I don't even know if we're ready Come for on. what's about to go down after this takes place. <laughs> I'm like, there is, I think, bramble and dead thistles in the church. And I just see that what this movie is, it's like the cigarette butt of a wildfire that just like starts the fire and the thing just goes rampant. And I think what we're about to see, it's it's so different than the holiness that was happening at Asbury. I think this is wild. It's uncontrollable. I think people are literally going to be like, what is happening? What are we doing? I told our whole team, I'm like, pack your bags with water bottles because we're baptizing people with water bottles after this movie, like right oh, in the man. theater, like it's going down. And Come I on. just think, I told Parker, I'm like, I'm so thankful for this movie because the thing that I think has been happening these last few years is people just don't have eyes to perceive the Kairos time we're living Come in. Come on. Yeah. They just have no idea that the revival they're praying for is in our midst. And mm. I, I just finished preaching all over the place this last weekend. And I keep telling people, I'm like, this movie is vital that you see it because it gives word and vision to what's happening in the spirit. And I think people, again, it's like, we know the verse where Jesus is like, you have a saying it's four months until harvest. And I think in the charismatic world, we have this saying, and it's like, revival's coming. It's happening one day, maybe someday, somehow. And this movie is like, wake up, open your eyes. The fields Mine. are white with harvest. Yes. Revival's happening. You got Isaiah over here. You got Jenny over here. You got Jeremiah over here. You got Craig over here. It's happening on YouTube. It's happening in fields. It's happening on beaches. And Mine. it's like, do you not perceive the time that we're living in. And I think the biggest hindrance to revival, first great awakening, second great awakening, Azusa, Jesus people, was that the church had no clue what was happening. And then years later, we've talked to people from Jesus people movement in Orange County and their biggest regret was they had no idea the hour they were living in. Mm, yep. And like, we've had people say to us, while the baptisms of Lonnie Frisbee were happening at Pirates Cove, they were down the street eating pancakes. And I tell people all the time, I'm like, don't be eating pancakes at IHOP when revival is down <laughs> Come the street. On. Come like on. happening in your backyard and then you're back in the prayer closet having your like prayer meeting with your grandmas. Like maybe someday this is going to happen. No, it's happening now. And I said to Parker, I was like, I'm so thankful for this movie because I think it's going to open up the eyes of the saints. And it's like, we're all saying this on social media. We're all sharing stories. We're sharing testimonies. But I think it's like that, like wake up call. It was a wake up call to me. I told Parker, I was like, I'm sh like, was sh physically shaking in the theater where I was like, oh my, like, oh my goodness, this is happening. Like, it's not made up. It's not in our heads. Like, this is real. This is really happening. And then 
gratitude just overwhelmed me where I was like, I can't believe we get to be alive during this hour in Come history. On. And like, I can feel that thing now of like, so many of us, we don't realize the time we're living in. And, and it's like, God's created you for this hour in history. And it's like, like literally we get to spend eternity talking about what we did with this hour on the earth. And I just refuse to say that we just were sleeping in our churches while literally our children are being mutilated and we're seeing the most chaos in culture. And I just think that this is the wake up call that the bride needs. And so I'm just, I'm thankful to be alive. I'm thankful to be a part. And I just pray that if you're watching this right now, the assignment on you is to be a gatherer. And right now, call five people, call 10 people, but do not go to this movie by yourself. Mm. Like that, I just, I know this is maybe a harsh word, but like, don't be selfish about this. Like, this is not just for you. This is for your grandma. This is for your friends. This is for your coworkers. This is for your people that hate God. They hate the church. They've been hurt. They've been wounded. Bring all of those people, buy their tickets for them. I pray that radical generosity would break out and people would just buy yeah. like tickets for their entire like homeschool co-op or they would buy tickets for their entire workplace and it would just like break something open. And Jesse, so- why don't you start us in prayer? We're going to, we're going to start praying here, Mike, if you don't mind, Jesse, you're yeah, already I, no, getting I was literally going to yep. ask her because and I want you to do this because like what she's doing is more than prayer. It's impartation because Jesse is radically generous generous and and that her family is ra- the green family's radically generous i want to say too there there's a principle of sowing and reaping and it's like when you disperse seed, you become entrusted f- with more seed. He gives seed to the sower. There have been single mothers. And listen, I have mega church friends, mega church lead pastor friends who haven't who d- haven't done anything for the film. I'm literally unfollowing them. It's like <laughs> because they don't see in the spirit what's happening. And uh, like literally like mega church, good, good friends. I've preached for them. I filled their church. I broke every record they had in attendance. And and yet they haven't done anything for this film. And yet there's single mothers messaging me saying, I felt so convicted by the Holy Spirit in prayer. I bought 47 tickets, gave them out to every single one of my coworkers. And then the next day had, and then there's these insane stories where people are saying, then the next day, somebody blessed me financially. And it was three times what I bought in tickets. So it's like, there's just something that's stirring. It's not about the money. Matter of fact, there, I mean, I have, I, we're all in on this thing. We, you know, we just straight up, like, we hope we even break even doing this. And that's how we got here. Like, I am not a movie maker. I'm a local church pastor. I've been literally going to my own co- congregation saying, guys, let's make this thing happen. We believe in it. But I want to begin to pray right now because he gives seed to the sower. So what we're going to do is this. Um, Jesse, I want you to kick off the prayer to provoke radical generosity in the book of Acts. One of the hallmarks of the early church was like, we're all in whatever this means. And uh, matter of fact, another guy in San Diego just bought out two auditoriums. This is just a normal guy, but he believes in what's happening. And so I want you to do that. And then what we're going to do is each cast member, if if you want, just jump in and start praying. We'll highlight you. And then let's just allow the Holy Spirit to begin yes. to declare and prophesy awesome. through us. Go ahead, yeah, Jesse. Holy Spirit, I just thank you so much yes. that what I just keep seeing right now for every single person in this nation, not just the people watching, is you're extending an invitation to the banquet right now. And so, Holy Spirit, I pray that right now yes. we would first right now, just respond to the invitation. And then God, I just pray right now that radical generosity would break forth right now in a way that we have never seen. I pray that it would be beyond what we saw in Acts, Lord God, but Mm. literally people would just start to make a pathway, preparing the way for people to encounter the real living Jesus. So right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that as people are sleeping tonight, you would just start to give them numbers, five, 10, 15, 20, 30, 60, 90, how many tickets they're supposed to buy personally. 
and who they're supposed to give those tickets to. I pray that there's divine assignments right now attached to those tickets. I even see right now, just prophetically, people in New York City actually giving tickets to people on subways and prophesying over them as they hand them the ticket. So Holy Spirit, right now, let this prophetic you know, word of knowledge evangelism movement take forth as we sow tickets to people and then prophesy over them and lead them to the gospel right now on the streets. And then they come to the theater with us. Just let this be a come and see moment like we've never seen in history before in Jesus name. I just want to pray that every assignment of the enemy to get this movie canceled, to stir up controversy, we cancel your plan, Satan. We know that satanic Hollywood wants to stop movies like this from being shown. We know there's already appeals going and people calling their theaters to cancel it. We pray, Lord, that you would thwart every plan of the devil. We cancel every demonic strategy, every plan, even friends and family that... God is going to save at the end of this film that are, oh, I have to go to work. Oh, after this, Father, I pray every strategy. The devil, guys, the devil is scrambling. The devil is scrambling. He knows he's about to lose tens of thousands of people. The devil's about to massively take a huge L. We're about to crash his economy. We're going to crash his stock market in this film. And he knows that. So he's scrambling to try to figure out how to get this movie canceled. Mark my words, he's going to try to cancel this movie, but guess what? Before he cancels us, we cancel his plans in Jesus' name. Every demonic power, every demonic spirit, as Jeremiah Johnson said, the spirit of Jezebel that's about to get knocked off the balcony by the Jehus of this generation, Jezebel, we cancel your plans in Jesus' name. The Lord rebukes you, Satan. I pray, Lord, send your warfare angels to make war against every power and every spirit that would hinder what you're trying to do. We just say right now, every plan, every strategy is canceled. Lord, uproot the strategies of the enemy. I pray, Lord, we all know what happened in Come Out in Jesus' Name. We all know what happened in the Sound of Freedom movie. All of a sudden, theaters couldn't play the movie. We had thousands of people messaging us saying, all of a sudden, Come Out in Jesus' Name wasn't playing. It wasn't working. The theaters had to postpone. They had to shut it down. This happened all over the country. We come against that now. The movie will work in Jesus' name. The file will play in Jesus' name. It will not get delayed. It will not get canceled. Uh, Owners of movie theaters will not bow and succumb to the pressure of these communities, multiple communities that are trying to already cancel this movie. We pray right now, Lord, those that are trying to cancel this movie will not be able to in Jesus' name. Satan, you have no power. You have no strength. You have lost this battle in Jesus' name. You've lost this battle. Suicide will be canceled in Jesus' name. Anxiety will be canceled in Jesus' name. Depression will be canceled in Jesus' name. And Father, we just pray together as an army. Guys, we're better together. There's 4,500 of you watching. 4,500 people praying against every strategy of the enemy. We are a spiritual army. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Come on, chat. Pull down every stronghold that's trying to hinder the move of God. This movie is not about us. It's about the gospel advancing in the nations. This is about the great commission. I heard someone in the chat say, oh, you guys are supposed to fulfill the great commission. That is what this movie is about. Preaching the gospel to every tongue, every tribe and every nation. So father, we pray every assignment canceled in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else got something to pray? Go for it. Let me just jump in right there, Lord, because I, I just thank you, God, that even just as Isaiah was just preaching, it's it's actually not about us. It's about every person that comes uh, getting the vision for their own life. And I, I thank you, God, what you did in people like Billy Graham and Reinhard Bonnke and, and those guys that were a singular man preaching to millions. But Lord, I thank you in this generation, what you want to do is fill every believer that has the Holy Spirit yes. to go and and preach the gospel and and heal the sick and cast out demons and, and do everything that you've called us all to do. I thank you that our job and every pastor in this world, their job is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. No longer is it about just a, a couple superstars on. standing on the stage. It's about every person. So God, I pray that even right now you start to put a fire into those that are seeing this video. And as people that come to the film, that they would have a fire birth inside of them as they leave the theater, that they will go on their divine assignment. And so, God, we just commit it to you. In fact, we consecrate the film for your purposes. This is not about any of us. We ask that you would do what only you can do through the Holy Spirit. And I also pray that you would send cessationists, that you would send those that think that that all of it's fake. And God, that 
the things that they've been lacking in their life, wondering why is my faith not alive? Why is my faith not, doesn't feel like I'm alive just knowing all the academics that they'll actually find in the spirit what they weren't even looking for and realize that it was you the whole time. And so God, we just commit the whole thing to you and ask that you do with it whatever you want. It's not about us. It's all about you. Lord, we just pray right now that your presence will be tangible as people come into the yes. theaters. We ask you, Holy Spirit, that you will begin to convict people of sin and righteousness and judgment. We ask you that the scales will begin to fall off their eyes, Lord. We ask you as people hear their testimonies, the testimonies and the stories, Lord God, of transformation of people, that their own story will be birthed there, Lord. I ask you in the name of Jesus that we will see prodigals come home. We ask you that those people who are discouraged, those people who are disappointed, those people who are spiritually dead, that you will revive them. May you spark that flame inside of them at those theaters, God. As people go to those theaters and they get demons, and we pray that when people go there, that they will get deliverance, that they will get healing, that they will get the manifest presence of Jesus, that families will be reconciled, Lord, that the suicide will be canceled. We pray, Lord God, that even supernatural healings will break out. People who have problems, disorders, and metal things in their bodies, that those things will begin to be dissolved, that blind eyes will begin to see, deaf ears will open, and that people who have issues with their knees will begin to be healed, heart problems will be healed, Lord. We ask you that. That just the tangible presence of Jesus, the fruit of the gospel will begin to be made manifest. Lord, we pray right now for the children, for the teenagers that are coming, those that maybe don't have you on their mind, that you will begin to arrest their hearts, that you will begin to draw them in, Lord, that you will begin to touch them at the deepest level, kindle them, Lord, and they would, that they would simply say, I would have never thought that at movie theater I will encounter God, that I will have an encounter with the presence of Jesus, Lord. We ask you, may this spill into all night prayer meetings. May may this spill into fasting. May this spill, Lord God, into getting up in the kitchen table getting up in the cafeteria in high school and middle school and preaching the gospel and seeing revival break out in schools, Lord God, and colleges. We pray in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you, God, that even as Vlad was praying for the Spirit of God to stir in these theaters, Father, we thank you for the movie theater attendants that will go through and check and clean. Father, for the janitors, Father, for the ones that take the tickets, God, for those working concession, Father, that the whole place would be arrested. God, we thank you that even people that are driving by, Lord, even as in the days of old, where they would drive and be drawn to the places of revival, mm -hmm. God, that you, they would just feel the drawing of the Lord, the conviction of Jesus would begin to draw their hearts, God. And as they pull into the parking lot, they will begin to stumble into these theaters and say, I don't know why I'm even here, but what must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for a massive of outpouring God we say have your will and have your way God we thank you Lord that people's lives will be transformed God we thank you Lord that creatives will arise from this no longer will they say that Christian movies are uh, low caliber that they're low quality that there's low yeah. acting but God that this will begin to stir the filmmakers and the play writers and screenwriters God and content creators Lord that this will begin to stir a generation that would completely take over the film industry for the glory of God we thank you Lord that even from this, even other producers and movie um, creators, that they would they would have an interest in doing more films with Christians, Lord. They would think that it was just about making money, God, but you're using it as a purpose, God, to draw their very hearts, God. I thank you, Father, that this is going to be a, a, a just a, a revival of great proportions. And we just want to say even right now, we just saw this in the core group, and I want to just say this. We have about 18,000 people with the children, the teens, and the uh, women and adult and the men. Any single person in the core group out of all 17,000 people, any single person that needs a ticket, we are providing yeah. those tickets Come on. for the core group. Any single person, the whole core group is coming together to make sure 
every single person, a child, a teenager, whoever, they have a ticket. Not one single student will be left out. Everyone will be there in the name of Jesus. And I would encourage every church to get on board to make sure that, that, that the sister in the back is not left out, that no one is left out. Ask God who you need to call and say, I felt from the Lord you wanted to be at this theater. Did you get your ticket? Lord, give us the gift of discerning of spirits and an increase measure right now. Father, we thank you that we are linking arms. Ministries are not in competition. We are linking arms together in this fight to advance the kingdom of our Lord. And we thank you, God, that it is done in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you, so yeah. Father, I just thank you for I, I thank you for your word for Isaiah 43 19. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I decree God new, uh, new moves of your spirit. I decree new anointings. I decree new revelations. God, that as people are coming into a theater and they're coming to see something, but they're going to see beyond their wildest imaginations. God, you're going to give them new revelation, new dreams, new visions, new outbreaks of revival, new mantles. Uh, Father, I decree in Jesus' name, uh, new deliverances. I decree new levels, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, that wildernesses are going to begin to be set ablaze with the fire of your spirit, oh God. I thank you that hard places are going to erupt and the river of God is going to begin to flow. We prophesy new outpoints, new yeah. outbreaks, that rain is coming upon dry territories. Yeah. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, that it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit and spirit of the living God. We decree this is the hour of the new when the devil would say destruction and darkness is upon you, that you are shining in our midst, oh God. And you're saying, behold, I do a new thing. Father, I prophesy uh, new leaders to arise. I decree, yeah. Lord God, yes, that new yes. revivalists raise up. I decree that new miracles break forth. I decree, Lord, you said your mercy is new every day. God, that people will come in and find new mercy. People confused about uh, certain areas of their life will find new clarity and new direction. That demons, mind-binding demons, destructive demons, demons of death, demons of depression, demons yeah. of anxiety, every foul demon that would hold your mind like a vice grip would be broken in the authority of Jesus' name because new levels of deliverance would break forth in your life. God, I thank you for new things that in this time of encounter. We're going to new levels. Uh, we're going to have new assignments. We're going to see new outbreaks. We're going to see new miracles, miracles we've never seen before that we've seen blind eyes open, but now we're going to see eyeballs and empty sockets. We've seen God kidneys be healed, but now we'll see kidneys where there were new kidneys. We've seen limbs yeah. to be healed, but God, now we're going to see, I heard the Lord say new levels of creative miracles. Now we're going to see an arm shoot out where there was no arm. Father, we decree it. You said to Job, decree a thing and it shall be established. We decree, as Jesse said, revival is now. The next is now, Lord God. It's not coming. The Lord. next is now. And God, we decree as an army around the world tonight that there is a new move of your spirit Lord. erupting yes. now 2023. And we say it is so in Jesus' name. I just want to pray for um all the discouraged ministers who are going to be coming into this theater. Yes. I really felt like as we were praying, I was seeing how when the prophet Elisha was, when they were getting ready to work the land and the worker, his ax, uh, the ax had fell into the river and the prophet began to come around and the ax had begun to flow in the water. I pray for every minister who feels like their ministry is at the bottom of the river. I want to encourage you that as the prophets begin to speak in yes. this movie, that you have not seen your best day, Ooh, that on. your best day is ahead. And every failed attempt Every, every Sunday that went by that you didn't see a miracle, every Sunday that went by that you felt dry, weary, discouraged, yes. wanted to quit, every time you tried a new method, I believe the Lord is saying, go back to the old method. Go back to where you didn't just go to business as usual, to the next thing as usual. And you're going to begin to see that ministry, the anointing, the power of God is going to rise to the surface where it looked like it was gone 
the Lord is going to replace and restore. And so right now we call hope arise to every discouraged minister, every pastor's wife that wants to quit, every pastor that wants to give up in storefront churches. I've been there. I know your worry. And I'm telling you, let it arise. Let hope arise. Restoration is coming. Healing is coming. Yes. There are more for you than are against you hold on do not grow weary i i just want to prophesy and decree that healings will see your building again there will be new manifestations again you will see god's glory cloud again you have not seen your and last angelic visitation that there is more she keep pressing keep she going do not uh, there is no gift that will remain idle in this yeah. season and right now, we just decree and declare encouragement. Get ready. I believe that the that the movie theaters will begin to fill your churches. I believe that we're going to see local churches say, oh, my gosh, I found you because of this movie, this random people that begin to prophesy and to speak encouragement over me when I wanted to quit and give up. And I would say, hold on, youth pastor. Hold on, pastor's wife. Hold on, prophet. Hold on, intercessor that you are going to rise to the surface in this season in Jesus mighty name. Yeah, right there. Lord, I just thank you that by the power of your spirit that you're initiating Isaiah six encounters mm -hmm. across America and even throughout the nations. We thank you that October 24th is a national day of commissioning in the spirit. And we pray right now that even as it was with Isaiah, that in the year that King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. We declare right now in Jesus' name that as men and women step foot across the barricade of that theater, we pray yeah. that they yeah. would see the Lord high and lifted up, that the train of your robe will begin to fill the theaters all across America and that men and women's lips would be touched mm -hmm. with the coals of fire Hallelujah. and that purity and holiness would erupt throughout the earth in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, where there has been resistance to the call of God, where there has been resistance to the commissioning of the Holy Spirit, we pray right now that you will begin to arrest the people of God <laughs> with the burden to go, with the burden to say yes, and we pray that the light of activation will come on in America in a way we have never seen. And that we would come into an hour where the church would be activated and alive. And that the, the power of God will begin to flow forward. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will begin to hear the sound of sending erupt in theaters all across America. The sound of sending, commissioning power, commissioning anointing. And even as it was in the book of Acts as men and women say yes to go throughout the earth and make disciples of all nations. We pray, Lord God, that you would meet men and women with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and that men and women will be transformed from their personal encounter to an encounter that begins to touch the nations of the earth, that men and women will begin to acknowledge that October 24th was the day that everything changed for me, where I went from being a lackadaisical back background Christian Come on. to a Christian alive with the fires of Jeremiah unable to keep the word of God in and we pray Lord Jesus that through this movie that the gospel would go viral throughout America in the matchless name of Jesus Christ come on fire Mike, do you mind if I say a real quick prayer for Israel? I know a lot of people are asking about I it. Was, you it, it know, man, we've spinning. been flowing we're, all night tonight. We're on the same page, man. We're on the yeah, same page. Please, yeah, go go ahead. Yeah, let's just do. say a quick prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in America. But God, right now we stand in solidarity and we pray for Israel. God, we know that this is the only nation you've made a covenant with. God, we know that Bible prophecy revolves around Israel. So Father, we pray that there would be a stop to the satanic terrorist organization called Hamas. We pray, God, you, you would yeah. break these attacks attacks we pray that you would be with every innocent palestinian that's losing their life in this war we pray god that you'd be with our christian brothers and sisters in palestine yeah. even those uh multiple hundred that lost their lives in the hospital today from a missile that misfired from one of the terrorist groups and landed in the hospital i pray god that you would supernaturally 
just begin to heal people that are innocent civilians, innocent Christians there. I pray, God, you'd restore them. I pray you'd be with every person that's lost a family member or a loved one. We pray that you, that we just pray against the spirit of terror, the spirit of Hamas, yeah. which is a Hebrew word. The Hebrew word Hamas literally means it means cruelty, violence, and injustice. And God, we come against that spirit. We come against that power. And we pray, God, be with Israel. Be with your people, God. And I pray, Lord, open up their eyes to you. Open up the Jewish people's eyes to Jesus, our Messiah. Lord, remove the blinders yeah. off these people in Israel that have rejected you as Messiah. God, we know they're still your chosen people, and we pray you'd remove the blinders that they would see you. Even in this tragedy, they would see Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, as their Lord and Savior, God. So, God, we pray for Israel tonight. We stand with Israel, and we also pray, God, for those innocent Palestinians, those civilians, and our Christians brothers and sisters, we pray, God, that Hamas's reign of terror would end in Jesus' name. These terrorist groups, their reign of terror would end in Jesus' name, and that, Lord, you would bring peace to the Middle East. As we know, God, this is a sign, not the only sign, but it is a sign of your coming. So, Father, we look up. You said in your word that as these signs happen, to look up. This is not the time to look down. This is not the time to be depressed. But the Lord says, look up for your salvation draws near. So, Father, we just pray healing and wholeness over the nation of Israel in Jesus' name. Go for it, Mike. Sorry. Hey, you know, listen, tonight marked me. And when each and every single one of you started to pray, and I, I'm, I, could, I know that I'm not alone in this, I could see it was a defining moment. Yes. The, the words that were being said were a defining moment. I, I just, even sitting next to my wife, you know, my wife is like a multi-generational Pentecostal and we found a video and I just want to, I'll end on this because we've been streaming for almost two, two hours, but we found this video in the archives because by virtue of creating this film, we had to go through everything to try to put this narrative together. And the goal wasn't for me to make a story. The goal was for me to say, God, what story were you making? And how can I say that in an hour and a half? And so we found this video of Julie's, what was it, your great grandfather? Great. It was her great grandfather who had this miraculous uh, encounter with God. And it was really like a old school conversion, right? Like God met him. Yeah, like the Lord literally it appeared to him. It was like a visitation within her bloodline. And he was a first generation Christian. And, and the video that we found, he's telling this story and he actually goes back to like, so he's an old man in the video telling this story. And he goes back to when the story happened, which was literally a hundred years from now. Encounter in 1922. So in 1922, coming into 1923, I'm looking at my wife because everybody knows who's married. You got she's fact checking me so that we, <laughs> yes. we we're giving you a real story right now. Um, and we this didn't make the movie, you know, because for the sake of time, there was so much that couldn't make the film. But so he's telling this story that happens in 1922 coming into 1923. And, and he said the Lord told him in this visitation. And this is Julie's heritage. Wow. So she's now that a 100 years from now that there is going to be a move and there and and 100 years from now that there is going to be a desperation and that God's oh. people are going to like begin to cry out and he's literally we saying yeah and he begins to and he's saying that there's going to be a generation i got chills all over my legs right now that in a hundred years from now so this is 19 this is now 2022 2023 so we're living in the fulfillment of julie's great grandfather's prophecy and he said that this generation of believers are going to rebuild the waste places wow and there there's an assignment on their life to rebuild the places that have been wrecked and laid low and they're going to begin to rebuild it. And I mean, when we found that footage, we were just bawling our eyes out because it's like his great granddaughter and her husband are now grafted into that story and making a movie and we are rebuilding these ways. And, you know, another thing, the Washington Post uh, actually featured this story 15 years ago or a little bit more than that now. I mean, I, I was in a very dark place. My dad had just died. And, you know, our marriage, we were separated. I was in a crazy dark place. And I literally walked into this parking lot, got out of my, or I got, got out of my car, walked out of my car into this parking lot, into this place I was going to shop. And this guy literally stopped me. And this is in Northwest Indiana. And he's like, 
whoa, I got this word for you. Now, if you've ever lived in Indiana, this is not as weird because, you know, Jeremiah will tell you he's from Indiana. Like there's a lot of prophetic people in Indiana. You know, Jeremiah Johnson knows like the there's something about Hoosiers that there's just like a really deep prophetic thing there. So I'm thinking, oh, man, it's just, and it's the Bible Belt. So I'm thinking, oh, this is some lunatic, like crazy Pentecostal dude. So he walks up to me. He's like, I got this word for you. And he looks at me and he said, you will be known for film. God is going to use you to make a movie. He, like, I see more than one movie. And he's saying this stuff. Now, at the time, I'm separated from my wife. I'm I'm pretty much backslidden, you know, and I come out of that experience. I thought the dude was off. I'm like, he, he has no idea what he's talking about. And I came back and I remember telling Julie that story. <laughs> I Yeah, I called her on the phone and I was like, yeah, this guy said that I'm going to be known for film, blah, blah, blah. And my wife's like laughing. She was like, Mike, you're not even really saved. <laughs> like, you're not even really saved. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, why don't you work on serving the Lord and like getting your life right? And I was like, yeah, I don't even, I don't even own a camera. Like, this is what I'm telling my wife. Yeah, you're right. I don't even own a camera. And the Washington Post actually featured that story because, you know, I'm not a filmmaker. And, and so the fact that we got here, you know, I think Jenny and Jesse and others, like you saw the result, like they're, we're not hyping this. There's a grace on this. When I, this thing is bigger than any one of us, when I was putting the film together and I just want to get this out publicly on record, you know, I started with a major company. I had to literally like in stop engaging with them. I don't know what words to use, but because I, I was fighting for scenes and I was like, no, this scene has to be in the movie. It has to be this way. And it was like, no one understood. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. You know, then we went to company three in, in uh, Toronto, which does all the major films. And, you know, the people that were working on it, it was like so ironic because the Christians I tried to make this film with didn't understand the vision. And I was fighting for things like, no, make it work. I don't care what your excuse is. This has to go here. This has to go there. And I just remember like ramrodding this thing through. And um, even to the point where when we got to the very end, there were so many professionals that were like, that won't work. That won't work. That won't work. And when we got to the red carpet and those moments in the film happened and people were jumping out of their seats, people were crying. I was like, it was so vindicating because I was like, these were not my ideas. These were things the Lord was showing me in prayer. I was fasting while I was making this thing. And so I say all that to say, God had been threading this thing together. It's not, I don't, it's to even call it a movie fails to communicate what it is. It's, it's, it's like, Paul, I'm not elevating this on the same level as scripture. So don't decontextualize this and make a short tomorrow. But I feel like the apostles in the first century wrote epistles that were delivered to the body of Christ. And it was a rebuke. It was a correction. It was an encouragement. They used the medium they had, which at that point was letters. This movie's not elevated to the same level as scripture. But I believe in our generation, voices have come together in this film to speak not just to the body of Christ, but to the world. And there's just such a weighty glory on this. Even when I was in Toronto, I mean, I was in the same um, studio where they did Barbie, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Turtles, many of the movies that you guys have seen and or you've seen come out. And I mean, it was like I, I was weeping and then I turned and the Muslim who's next to me, who's doing sound design, was also weeping. And the atheist who's over there was also weeping. And it was just like, that was the effect that it had. And that's how I knew that God was doing something with this film that's that's massive. So I want to leave you guys on this. Uh, this Friday, we're doing a short uh, premiere, like of a extended kind of like preview of the film. It's going to be on my channel. So jump over to my channel for that for this Friday. But the reason why we're doing that is because we have people hosting auditoriums all across this nation. And we're going to be praying more together this Friday. Please continue to pray for November that New York City will, will get that last 5% approval so we can shut down Times Square and do that after the movie. And the last thing I want you to be praying for and believing with me is that it, within the next week, we we finally sell enough tickets to unlock an extended run of the film. As of right now, it's only October, October 24th. The only way to tell Hollywood that we want more dates is to literally show them that we're going to show up. And so I'm believing Come for on. that. 
Um, and and so stand with me, guys. Thank you for everything. Mike, let me say something really fast. Up tonight. There, there's an error on the website, guys, because you guys are all clicking it right now. I'm seeing it in the chat. If you go to the Fathom Events website, there's the wrong trailer. It's for Utopia. It's a different movie on your no movie. Way. Yeah, on Mike, on your movie, there's a different trailer. So, guys, that is not the movie. I don't know if it's like some demonic movie, but the chat is going crazy about it. Wow. The Utopia is not our movie. We'll get that fixed. I'm saying it like I'm running things. I'm going to call Fathom tonight and get that fixed. But we're going to get that fixed. <laughs> I've made myself a manager in this movie. And then the other thing I want to say is that you can call your local theater. Listen closely because the entire night everyone's been spamming. It's not at my theater. You can give your theater a call. Most of these theaters are ran by normal people, the owners of them. So you can call them and say, hey, can you please play this movie? And they will add it. Our theater, local theater, didn't even have this movie a month ago. And we have a 300 seat auditorium now playing this movie that sold out. So the biggest theater in my area was not playing this movie, AMC. And as of a month ago, they're now playing it. So call your theater, check the website, and ask the people, say, hey, we want this movie in. Can you please make it happen? Send them the Fathom Events link. They'll contact Fathom Events and we'll get the movie in your theater. And if anyone wants to hire me to be a movie promoter or a manager of a movie, <laughs> um, uh, after this movie, Mike says I'm available. So I'll be a promoter. You're hired. There. hired. Yeah. Hired. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. I just wanted to say that because they've been saying, what is Utopia? Is that your, they think that's our trailer. That's not our trailer, guys. Well, listen, we've broken every single website and that's an amazing thing. And we're just showing people like this is a move. So thank you to the cast. Thank you for everybody coming out and spending two hours of your night to be here and to pray together and to just prophesy what's going to be so fun is we're wrapping this thing up now. And then when all the footage comes out, my team taking what you said tonight and combining with the footage of it actually happening in theaters. Come like on. I live for that. Cannot wait for that moment. And hopefully I get to see all of you guys in times square on the other side yeah. of this. So yeah, we love you Come guys. On. We're not going to do an after show tonight like we usually do. We're going to just um, close it out. The names of every guest, just so you guys know, because another comment I've been seeing is what's his name? What's his name? Their name is right below them. So you can see my name. You can see Josh. You can see Ryan, Craig. <laughs> oh, so you guys can check your That's you guys Steven. can check out their Instagrams. They're Steven. You can check out their Instagrams, their YouTube, their Facebook. Please go follow on all their pages. We're not doing any type of offering. None of that tonight. We want to focus on getting the movie out there because we know the life changing power of the presence of God. And again, this is not about us. This is about fulfilling the Great Commission, preaching to all nations. This movie you're going to see, it's a it's a preaching movie. <laughs> There's literally sermons throughout the movie. It's all about God, has nothing to do with us. It's all about giving him maximum glory and honor. And I know when we get off this call, every one of us probably have a similar routine where we say, Lord, we give you all the glory, all the yeah. honor, all the praise. Amen. We humble ourselves before you. So we love you guys. Thank you guys for being on here tonight. And uh, international, that will be something we talk about in the future. And then streaming, yes, it will be streaming in the future. So those two questions I just wanted to answer that you guys keep asking. It will be on streaming platforms and it will be uh, who knows? It might be. Who knows if it goes international? If you guys sell out these theaters, well, we Isaiah, we we literally had a conversation with Canada today. So again, guys, keep praying because Canada might be the next country to unlock. And then we're talking to the UK next week. So we're trying to get it in theaters internationally. If we don't, it'll go to digital distribution, and then we'll work with pastors and people all over the world to to screen it and show it together. Because it's definitely, I mean, it's going to be great to watch this on your iPad and watch it at home. But there's something about watching this with groups. And so, like, I've already started to reach out to some of the biggest churches globally and say, okay, if we can't get it in theaters theaters in your country, would you be willing to open up your church and fill it up? Come and they're on. like, yes, yes. So I'm already working on that beyond anybody who knows me knows like the reason why I named the movie, the domino revival is because I stack dominoes for a living. I'm like very strategic. <laughs> I'm always looking ahead. So like, we're already trying to get it. So I know we're inundated with thousands of messages from people over, all over the, the world. And we are working to get it whether it's digital through churches or physical and theaters, we're already having those talks. I want to also speak on behalf of this whole group, Mike. We love your shirt tonight. So I just want you to know if you want to give me bowling lessons, bro, we can come I got bowl it from together. A store. This dude for those for everybody who thinks I'm doing the movie because I'm trying to, you know, like I'm money hungry. I got this for thirteen dollars at a thrift Let's store go. in New York right. City. Uh, my wife it's a beautiful it bowling out, shirt. I love it, bro. If she thinks I'm hot, that's all that matters. Come on now. The <laughs> chat's been saying they love your shirt, so I had to just shout it out there. <laughs> Trying to have fun with it. Love it. Can all Jonathan right. sing us out? Hey, come on, Jonathan. You put him Give on the spot. Look at him. Put come him on, on the spot. Uh, 
Listen, my voice is going out. I gotta save. I gotta save my voice for these vows on Friday. Come on okay. now, <laughs> yeah, boy. All right, love it, Jonathan. Just so you know, my wife and kids have been playing your song over and over. Are you bloodbot? Are you my little daughter? She's five. She said, "Daddy, what does bloodbot mean?" She's been singing at school. <laughs> We've been playing your song nonstop in the car. Uh, 24 7 so bro you're up in my house and in my car literally every day so i love what you're doing brother it's awesome i want to shout out a song of his too that i just found and it is uh dance like david you guys yes you get on that that when song is fire back to the city listen jenny why don't you sing one of his songs crazy. jenny you, you sing us out you sing us out so something funny real quick and then maybe jenny can close it out but Jonathan Stamper reached out to me a long time ago. I want to tell this story publicly because I didn't know him. I never put it together, but I try to make margin in my life to like meet with random people and like let be spirit led. So I get this message from this guy. Hey, man, I feel called to deliverance, to prophecy. Like, I feel like there's a similar thing on my life that's on your life. Can we meet? So I'm like, listen, man, if you come out to me, I'll meet with you. So we, I was like, and let's get a burrito. So I sit down with Jonathan Stamper. We have a burrito together in New York City, have this amazing conversation. He's taking notes the whole time. And I'm like, man, I like this guy. So I come home and I tell Julie, she's like, what'd you do today? I'm like, yeah, I, I kicked it with this guy, Jonathan Stamper, blah, blah. She's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, we were talking about deliverance. Probably. She's like, you mean Black Voices Movement? I'm like, what is that? <laughs> it's like, I did it. Like, that's my guy. I didn't even know that. She's he like, sang. I wanted an autograph. I don't know if you even know that. Like, I didn't even know you saying. I thought we, I was mentoring him in like prophecy and deliverance. <laughs> and Julie's like, no, he's like a viral <laughs> singer. Um, so, anyways, like, it, we love your music. We and we're just so excited for people to get to meet you a little bit more in the film. And oh, and when your song married. drops in the film, oh, it's dude, so good. Well, but you're so you're getting married what a couple days from now? Yeah, I'm getting married on Friday, actually. Come on. Wow. Welcome That's to Glory, brother. It's something special. Something's happening this Come week. On. There's some oil. <laughs> There's some oil. The Come Lord. on now. Come on, we need little stampers. We need little stampers. <laughs> My God. Give me three to five, man. Three to five. <laughs> give him a year give yeah we'll, we'll give you a little bit jenny do, are you gonna sing us out or what sing his song I as we go out jenny no I'm no no sing. come on no, but i want to say something because because i get this question all the time on my social media because we did the real we did the spin-off spontaneous version of the chain break is in the room everyone's like oh my god jenny you wrote that song no, I've been telling you. My wife thought you wrote that song too. Black Voices Movement. That's Enola. I hope I'm saying her name right. And Alvin, and I believe maybe you're in that too. But from what I understand, they're the songwriters of that. And they just graciously allowed me to do my little scratchy voice, little little bit that the that no, is. No, it's fire. So that's fire. why I love that they're featured in this movie too, because the chain break is in the room. Everybody Come on. Break. Break, 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 hey, break. Hey, so it's gonna be good. Jenny, can we get one verse before we go? I mean, we're almost we're three minutes the from two hours. You guys know I only on my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. What the chain break us in the room, and there's no telling what he's gonna do. I said the devil can me on my family. Come on, notice to the enemy. All the chain breakers in the room. Everybody say, there's no telling what he's going to do. Isaiah, you go. Yeah, right. I'll grieve the Holy Spirit. <laughs> if I go, the whole stream will shut down. It'll start sparking. <laughs> the live stream company yeah. will cancel my contract. Out, They'll be like, I'll get banned. I'll get banned on YouTube if I sing. <laughs> Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg already said he'll ban me if I sing. So, you know, we don't oh. <laughs> help us Lord. Love you so, guys. Funny. so you guys want to hang out for like another hour and tell jokes or, you know, I usually stream three hours, so it's kind of early for me right now. Yeah, I'm thinking that we're going to have to actually hang out. I love yeah. it. We, Wait, love you guys. we love you guys. I think he, I think he, uh, he might've fell asleep or something. I'm not sure. He had to go. Oh, mercy. No, he had Jeremiah to go. actually has a life. <laughs> he doesn't live he on the internet like all of us go. all day. Yeah. He actually has a life, but. Pregnant Jesse is here. 
Everybody needs to be here. No, I love Jeremiah and Morgan. I'll tell, Jeremiah I want to, I'll tell a quick Jeremiah story because this is like how I knew he was next level. I was in Switzerland and I got asked to do this big pastor's conference where they draw pretty much like every spirit-filled lead pastor in the whole country. And then they nominated me to, to preach this conference. And so I had never... I didn't know anything about Switzerland. I don't even know why I got picked. And so I fly out there and I made a list in prayer of like what I think the Lord wanted me to deal with. And I numbered it. So I hit up Jeremiah randomly and I'm like, hey, Jeremiah, I'm here in Switzerland. I'm looking for like just some prophetic insight. I want to make sure I don't miss the mark. Can you tell me like, what do you think my assignment is while I'm in, in uh, Switzerland? I kid you not. This is one of the weirdest stories of my entire life. He goes, yeah, what I was always, I was always almost going to do my Jeremiah impression, but I won't do that. Cause he won't <laughs> he's not here to so defend he, himself. He, so he, don't, don't be. Steven does it too. Do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Do he's it. Like, do you it. Do won't do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I want to hear Stevens. Don't do it. We're all characters. Guys, we're live right now. Just so you know, 4,000 people. People. <laughs> so <laughs> Jeremiah sends me a voice memo back and this is weird. He lists all six things in order wow. verbatim. He's like, yeah, what the Lord is showing me is this, 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 wow. this, this, and this. And it was in the exact order word for word. And I was like, I freaked out. I was like, did I send him a video or like, mm -hmm. did he see my list? And he was like, not nah, just what the Lord said. So, you know, that those kinds of stories are like, Mike, wow, uh, the chat right, wants Lord. to know why why Josh hasn't said a word. They said the guy Josh hasn't said a word. Can you introduce <laughs> Josh, please? We should have done this Josh in the beginning. Josh is like, who is They're that like, guy? They're like, there's a guy there that hasn't said a word. Josh, they keep saying Josh. that everybody was friends with. Okay, so I'll do an introduction briefly, and then maybe we could. Yeah, who is that guy in MySpace that everybody Tom, had to Tom, be with? Josh is Tom. 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 MySpace. Yes. Tom. Like, <laughs> Josh is just Tom like sold there. the company and peaced out. Okay, so Josh is the executive pastor of V1 Church, but Come I will on. say it's kind of prophetic that he's in this this Zoom, and let me tell you why. So Josh was meeting with some executives, and he was the one who actually heard that somebody in the movie industry listens to my sermons every week, and he came to me and was like, hey, I don't know if you want to do anything with this, but I heard that this guy, he's really high up, he listens to your sermons every Sunday, and um, yeah, I don't know. And and I was like, Josh, tell it, go back, message him, tell him if it's true that we want to do a movie. And he was like, Well, what is the movie going to be about? I'm like, I don't know. We'll make <laughs> something up by the time that we get there. Like, we we I don't want to miss an opportunity if this is true. So Josh is one of those guys that like he drops one idea a year on me that changes my entire life. So wow. Josh, I don't know if you want. And to he say does anything, everything. If really... you go to a V1 event, Josh is doing everything behind the scenes, <laughs> making everything happen. <laughs> Mike gives him a list of like 90 things, and is like, "Why isn't all this done?" Josh is like, "I'm trying." So he's <laughs> exactly. he's the brain. Yeah. If, if we make he's any money off, yeah, if we make any money off this, he's getting a raise. Let me just tell you. Yay, Josh. <laughs> no, I. Uh, it's funny because I just looked at my Instagram. And I literally got over a hundred followers tonight just by <laughs> just by sitting oh here. <laughs> There's favor on this broadcast. Tonight, on. I'm telling you. <laughs> you know what I did to Josh though. So Josh is actually one of the most prophetic people I've ever met in my life. And he is. um I can't yeah, I can't say the name, but there's like massive ministries where Josh is like, God, they hand him the mic. He releases a prophetic word. He actually trains hundreds of prophets through V1 every month. That's like his designation in addition to being. So when we were in Switzerland, same thing. They had me preaching like five times a day, six times a day, just wearing me out. I got totally exhausted like three days in. So on stage, I was like, guys, I know you've seen him. I haven't introduced him yet. This is Prophet Josh. He's a renowned international Come prophet. On. Once I said that, nobody even wanted Come anything on. to do with me. The line for <laughs> Josh went out the door. It was like, yeah, we're done with you, Mike. We're done with this. Like, we want Prophet Josh. So, like, in the nation of Switzerland, he is like a renowned major prophet now. So... And by the way, the whole chat is saying we're following him right now. Everyone go follow him. So you're about to get like a thousand. You're about to, 4, You're going to get a record 4, deal, a record deal over here. Not even trying. Yeah, I wanted to shout out this. someone that's not on here. Yeah. That we absolutely love so much. We've been, we've been getting close with their family is Apostle Pagani. Apostle yes. Pagani, the movie 
is so, so cool and so unique. And he actually shows a side of him that I think the the church world so good. Yes. just be so refreshed to see this different side to him. I think he got some teary eyed in there and it was like, yes, wow, it was really shocking. So we love you, Apostle Pagani yeah. and please Mama Pagani. We just love them so much. Yeah, we actually, yeah, we were just talking. So in the film, that's so funny that you picked up on that, Jenny. So I, my goal was to show, cause I hate when people get typecast in ministry. Like, yeah. you know, like, they, okay, it's like uh, people know Isaiah as like a deliverance guy, but the truth is Isaiah has released major prophetic words that have come to pass. So I tra <laughs> then even with Vlad, the thing about Vlad, and, and I, I don't want to ruin it, but like Vlad is actually very funny. So yes. when really? so I, I, I actually <laughs> yeah, told him really. Vlad's hilarious. So I, when we were working on the movie, I was like, I want to show the funny side of Vlad. I want to show the personable side and like carve that out. And I was really intentional. And then with Pagani, I told Pagani, I said, bro, when you see the movie, you'll see how I try to open up a whole nother. Cause that's the thing, you know, and I want to honor every single one of you that are here and the people who aren't. I've been, you know, I got this word years and years ago about like me having a Jack Hayford style call on my life. And I had the privilege of meeting Jack Hayford at one time. And what I love about him is he was like multi-denominational and he was in a lot of different streams. So I've been this anomaly where I get invited to a lot of different types of churches and ministries. And I was spending time with each and every single one of you individually and we were laughing together and we were crying together. And in my mind and, and in my spirit, I was like, man, how like how could I actually show them that they're more alike than they think they are? Mm. So I think one of the things that makes this movie special wow. is bringing together so many different types and it actually worked. And then what was weird, and again, I don't wanna ruin it, but like when we were doing the interviews, people were name dropping each other. And that's when I got my mind blown. Cause I was like, what? And again, I don't want to reveal it, but the story is all overlay. It's weird. Yes. It's weird. Like when when I was cut in the film and and shout out Evan Wilson, who was the producer of the film, like literally turned yeah. into a producer. I'm I mean, I, we got I can't say the name of the Christian company we work with, but we got so deep with them. And I in my spirit, I was like, I'm about to fire them because they're not understanding because I'm basically making an hour and a half sermon. That's what I was doing. And they're not getting it. And I went to go call Evan to be like, bro, will you pick up the mantle? And he called me first and he was like, I was just in prayer. I know this sounds crazy, but will you let me get a crack at some of these edits? I think I can do it. Oh. And I was like, Evan, I literally called you to ask if you would be willing to try it. And wow. he became a world-class producer through the process. Yeah. And I told him it was like, it was our Wizard of Oz experience. Cause like, if you ever watch the movie Wizard of Oz, they get to the end and it's like, oh, if I was, if I actually needed a brain, I would have never got this far. If I actually was scared, I would, it's like, they had it in them the whole time. And I, I told Evan, I was like, bro, we became directors and producers through, through this process because, you know, God used it. So shout out Evan Wilson. Um, he's not here, but I mean, we couldn't have done it without him. And that dude teed off, but I mean, yeah, yeah, so God did it. So anyways, I don't, I'll, I'll talk all night. I'll let you guys go. Oh, okay. Jules has got some, okay. Never mind. Never she mind. She has a knockout don't, joke. Don't you leave said? the zoom yet. Julie, okay, Julie. Oh, wait, wait, are we getting thing. off? Cause I'll keep it. I have a funny BTS story. If you guys want to hear it scenes. behind the scenes. So oh, I was like, what's BTS? We go ahead. Doing... Sorry. <laughs> wait, wait, what'd you say? I didn't know what behind BTS meant, but now I do. Oh, I'm not I a director either. like Mike Spielberg over there. <laughs> <laughs> so as we were preparing for this movie what people may not know is that we and maybe you guys do we hosted everybody in our home most of the interviews were in our house and so as we were going through this process we were sitting down at dinner I don't remember who the last one was maybe it was maybe it was Jeremiah I don't whoever the last person who came through um we were sitting at dinner with my kids and I said you know guys what I what I hope that you saw through this process I was explaining to my I have a teenager and a little one and um, I was like, what I hope you guys seen is that mommy and daddy, we didn't, we live our life. We didn't have to hide anything. We didn't have to go through our cabinet. You know, like if apostle Ryan comes, he can open any door, any cabinet, he can go through our house, <laughs> you know? So I'm explaining this. And I said, I really want you guys to learn how to live like that. Because if you ever feel the need to like 
hide things for a minister to come over. You got the wrong metric, Preach. you know, and come I'm on. trying to explain the Holy spirit to them. And, and my little one's just looking at me and, and she's got this like look on her face and she's listening to me talk. And so I was like, what do you guys think about that? And, and my nine-year-old goes, well, mom, you did put those Mickey Mouse shoes in the closet. <laughs> 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 and I said, touche, Everly, touche. Okay, I did. I Everly did. will tell. Everly was about to cast the spirit of Disney. It must have been me it. coming because you know I always call it demon land. It must have been me that was, that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> But just so you know, they are in the closet. But yeah. That's the only thing. She's like, you know, mom. She's like, you know, mom. I agree, but why did you hide the Disney shoes? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's hilarious. Hilarious. Except that. <laughs> well, Julie's saved, but not sanctified. So we're working. We're He's working. We, gotta, we all got to work at our salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> Especially being married to you, Mike. It's a constant, you know, just Lord, here I am. I'm just out here you, Lord. Trying to hang I don't on. know why she <laughs> We all heard your testimony, bro. God is good. God is good. Sure, I'll take you to Disney, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we got to get off here. Some of us are still, some of us are still trying to have more kids. So we got to all get off of here tonight. I know it's late for everybody. Wow. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. <laughs> it's getting, it's getting to that time where I'm on the border right here. I'm on the border. You know, I might, I might get canceled here in about another five minutes if I stay on. <laughs> Jonathan's going to wait about four days and then he's going to go for it. Yeah. We, we exactly. love you guys. If you guys listen, if you guys want a prophetic word, Josh Hamstra, his inbox is open on Instagram tonight. <laughs> He is giving out free buy get buy five prophecies get the six one free special right now on Instagram. All of you in the chat, all you've been doing is talking about Josh. So he's elusive. He's you know prophetic. You guys can go hit him up on Instagram. The movie, no jokes. The movie's gonna be amazing. October twenty fourth, the Domino Revival. Get your tickets right there in the pin comment. We love all you guys, and we'll see you guys in the next one. God bless you guys.